It's Wednesday, April 10th, 2024, and three of you are watching Co-op for Two, broadcasting live from Champaign, Illinois. Today we're playing part two of the seventh Citadel threat called Datachem's Awakening. And I have been looking forward to this all week. For some reason, uh, this game has got its little hooks into me. I think it's the exploration of the world. It's hard to leave areas unexplored and wonder what they are. YouTube says three viewers in the channel. And that That's basically all of us. Matt, Jonathan, and I, according to um, what I can make out here. Um, Jonathan played with me for the full seven hour stream last week where we played part one. Matt is joining us for a little bit today, at least. Not everyone has the stamina to stay awake over or has the schedule that will permit staying awake all night for this. Um, but that's okay. There's no stress. You can watch it afterwards. You can not watch it at all. I can completely understand why. The Seventh Citadel might not be a game that streams well or that would be conducive to playing along with me because sometimes I, these battles take place that are sort of annoying optimization things where you can't do anything if you're just watching but wait for me to finish my turn. However, I am enjoying it. Um, so we're going to keep playing it. What else do we need to talk about? All right, you might notice a couple new games behind me. The Morrison Game Factory just arrived. If you don't know what that is, that was a Kickstarter game published by uh, Post Curious. Rita Orlov is the person who is Rita Orlov. It's her company, but this is the first game that's not by her. She's the one who did Light in the Mist and the Emerald Flame and one other one that's Threads of Fate. Puzzle games, very, very beautiful puzzle games. And the Morrison Game Factory, I believe, is the first one that wasn't made by her, um, but she's been championing, championing it. And it's a puzzle narrative game framed as sort of, um, framed as a board game like a found board game where pieces 
un unlock to make a story. So it kind of looks like you're dealing with an old school board game, but really it's a puzzle game. Take a look on around the internet if you want to see what it's about. I think we'll be playing that pretty soon. And there are a couple other games I want to play relatively soon. I've scheduled a mug book session for Sunday. Sunday. That seems what the group wants to play when we can't play our dear homes play by mail. So that's what we'll be doing Sunday. The other game I want to get played this month is Body of Evidence. That's the game to the far right side of the bookshelf for you. That's the game with this gimmick that you're doing an autopsy. You're trying to sort of solve a crime, but you're doing an autopsy. And I was, I was very suspicious of the game. They were sort of doing a hard sell on sending out review copies. And the, they tried to get me to take a review copy, but I just backed it instead. And I saw a couple previews come out and I was skeptical about it. But I have heard from a couple people on the Discord that they enjoyed it quite a bit. And the reason I want to get it played soon is that they've just started a new Kickstarter for new cases. On the, along this line. So I think we should play it and then we can review it and actually give people some guidance about whether we think it's worth backing the next Kickstarter and whether I should back the next Kickstarter. Or should I say now going forward whether we should back the next Kickstarter because there are a bunch of you who have joined the Patreon to help pay for the games we play on this channel which I really appreciate. It's not going to make a difference. It's not going to make uh, it's not going to change the focus of the channel in any way. But um, if you do appreciate this channel and you do play the games through us on the channel instead of purchasing them, I would appreciate you helping out and we can do it as a team. It's fun to do it together. And I think you might find that it's enjoyable to be part of the process of buying these games and you can help me decide what games to buy. So anyway, I am grateful for those of you who have joined Patreon. If you can't or don't feel it's right for you, that's fine too. I'm still happy to have you join in the conversation, play along, etc. Okay, what else should we talk about before we get started? Um, you might notice on the table, I've 3D printed a couple of things. I've 3D printed this little on Thingiverse. There you can search for different board games and people have contributed things. So I printed out these little card holders. I thought maybe for our hand, we could put the four cards in our hand like this keep them nicely organized. And I did in fact create a new view for us, which is here. Now you can see my hand close up as well as the top down normal overview, as well as any card that's on the green screen. So I'm hoping this might be a good layout for with a little bit of room for talking about items we have. So I'm thinking this layout might be reasonable for when we're having to decide what to do with our hand. Okay, so there's that, that's new. Then there's this little thing, which is actually very convenient for me as a player to go through the items being carried. I only printed out one of these because I'm not sure it's gonna be useful, but it's actually quite useful, convenient for me but I'm not sure this one actually is helpful for the channel because you can't see the cards from the front view. And I don't think you can see them much in the top down view either, unless I were to hold them up like this. So if I look through them, you can't, you don't see them. So maybe even though this uses less space here, maybe we'll do away with that. And then I did print out a little Holder here for the draw deck and the discard deck and a little space here for the blocked cards. 
And the other thing that these things do, in addition to keeping things orderly, is it lets me move them around on the table as a group a little more easily, which is convenient. All right, so there you have it. There's some 3D printed things for us. And uh, I did find when I backed the seventh continent, I got this. And I did sleeve, you might notice, the cards in our hand to make them easier to shuffle. Some people sleeve cards to keep them from getting marked up. I don't care about that, but it is easier to for decks you're going to be shuffling a lot to do it that way. And then, so this little binder with sleeves, I put here our... Um, quest cards. These are cards that you don't give up very frequently, although you can use them. So we are going to... Um, this is another thing I'm not sure if we're going to keep using, because this is good for the reference cards, and it's kind of thematically fun, but I'm afraid that we'll forget we have these. Like, this is a card that's important to remember we have. So, and we'll be trading these in. So I don't know. This I'm not sure if we're going to use, and this I'm not sure if we're going to use. You let me know. Let me know if you think they're getting in the way or if they're useful. All right, what else do we need to talk about? Uh, Matt says, do you, how does that work? Do you have your own 3D printer? I do have a 3D printer. It's very old by now. It's very old and slow. I have an Anycubic i3 Mega. And you could spend uh, $300 now and get a much better 3D printer. In fact, I should. I'm just holding out. The 3D printers advance so quickly, they're getting so much faster and better, that I keep holding out for when it's time to pull the trigger. The one I've been looking at recently is the Bamboo P P1S. Nice enclosed. Small footprint is important for me because I don't have much space here. Right? Everything I buy has to get stored away. The only thing that's holding me up from that bamboo one is that it's loud. And that's not so convenient. So if they come out with another model that's similar size and footprint that's quiet, then I'll pull the trigger on that. The 3D printers are amazing. They do feel like magic. It's like being on Star Trek with a uh, transporter. What, what is it called? <laughs> what is it called that makes them food? I can't remember now what it's called. Um, okay, what else do we need to talk about? Um, in the Discord, Isara was talking about a new game that is getting a lot of attention recently called Agemonia which does look very good. Cooperative, dungeon crawl, heavy story and exploration, campaign, legacy elements. You put stickers on it, and apparently the story is very good. It's quite tempting. The Replicator, Jonathan says. Yes, The Replicator. Okay, so um, I guess we can get into today's session here. So we're playing Datacom's Awakening, and we played the first mission last week called No Smoke Without Fire. We discovered smoke far off. It turned out to be a caravan that was attacked by bandits. We saved a bunch of them. One wanted revenge. We didn't do that. And we did discover we went into the city of Kel, it was pretty cool. They all wanted money, though. I guess these big cities are the same all over. And there were some bandits there that were a little strong for us. We also came across a couple of interesting things. We came across uh, that big disc that was in the area, and we came across a ballista hidden in the sand, which we forgot to dig up. So at the end of last week's case. We read this epilogue here. We took a 99 card, which was what? 
That's probably one of these. The 99s are, yeah. We got a 99 for rescuing people, Hope Reborn. That's the thing that lets us upgrade. We returned three objective cards, the three people that we saved. So for each one, we need to choose what how to upgrade the Citadel. Then it says, discard all of your hand cards. We finished the scenario, no smoke without fire. And then when we're ready to begin, we took a seven card, which just tells us how to save the game. And now we're gonna go to the next scenario, get fed or die trying. But before we go to the next scenario, we have to do some of the upgrades that we decided to put off until today. So the first thing we have to do is we have to check off three items. Provisions, defense, knowledge, or influence. And that was the little reminder here that I put that we have to do three things. Okay, so here's where we currently stand. We're at three production, we're at one defense, three knowledge, and two influence. Now, what do we know about these? Very little. We have been warned that the Citadel is sort of defenseless, so you could argue that we should try to build up the defenses before something happens to it. Uh, although that's not the most enjoyable thing. The most enjoyable thing for us seems is probably knowledge, where we can get new cards and learn new stuff. However, when we made our way to the city, which is near us, so it might not be a bad guess that we're going to be back down there. Um, we got several things that says if you don't have seven influence, you got to pay to get in. So it's tempting to go all in on influence. We're really not told much else here. Uh, we're not given much guidance yet. So three, we could spread it out. I'm inclined to spend some on influence and maybe some on def knowledge and then maybe try to get that ballista for defense. Maybe not worry about building up our defense. Let, let that happen naturally. But um, these upgrades are where I can spend time talking with the channel and getting get, letting us make these decisions as a group. What does the chat think about where to put our three points? And we can put more points on here if we want to use some of our upgrades for that. But for now, three points to decide how you want to spread them out here. If we knew we wanted to go back to Cal, we might right away, we could put all our work into influence. Knowledge might help us handle other threats. Remember that these don't sort of come with us when we go out into the world. They're for our community. And so we've not yet had them tested or checked, really, other than trying to get into Kel with influence. So what does the group think? Where do you want to put those three? Jonathan, you're the one who's been playing this most with me. Oh, I should say the last piece we should talk about before you, while you're thinking about that, I started a Google Doc where we could keep notes. A uh, reminder to, that we should take pictures of maps before we clear the table, and I did find a couple of those. I uh, made reminders of the things we need to do during preparation. These are things we built that that trigger during preparation. So these are reminders of us. And then we've been keeping notes about what certain cards are in case something says, like, if you do this, you get this kind of card. And then some notes about locations. I kept track of where we got the ballista, where that disc was what's in Cal, what things they want. They wanted gambling boons, they wanted high influence, they wanted grain for the animals, and they wanted to barter for items. So Jonathan, I wouldn't, oh, those are my reviews. Jonathan, I wouldn't mind if you, I sent you the link to that. You could update that too as we go. 
John says, I'd split influence and knowledge. Perry says, if it's for the community, I'd say defense. We did find the ballista for defense, though. I'm more inclined to go get that as a way to do our defense rather than spend our points on it. But, I mean, you have a point. For all we know, something bad's going to happen. And if we don't have a high enough defense, we're going to lose buildings. For all we know, we don't know. Jonathan says, I'd split influence and knowledge. All right, since I want to do that too, let's use two of them, one for influence and one for knowledge. Okay, now we got one more left. If no one else speaks up, we're going to go with Perry, since Perry is here. Perry says, put some in defense, so I'm willing to put one in defense. Anyone else want to change that? I could definitely see the argument for putting it in influence as well, instead to try to get that influence up as soon as we can. But in, defense is our weakest one, so you could couldn't hurt us to put it there. All right, since no one else is going, I'm going to use, do what Perry wanted and go to the defense. Because of the YouTube delays, I can't. I don't like to wait too long, but before asking a question. So as a reminder, please do just shout out in the chat without being asked when there's something you want to do. There's a, if there's a decision comes up during play, don't wait for me to ask. Just shout out what you want to do. Don't be shy about it. And before I make the decision, I'll look in the chat. Okay, so those are our three up the upgrades that we got at the end of the epilogue. Um, and then discard all their cards. So I'm just going to put all these in the discard pile here. We still have a blocked card. Um, and now we have a new scenario to start, but we do have a bunch of these Hope Reborn cards that you don't want to carry. It was pointed out to me, uh, on YouTube after our first playthrough, that you don't want to carry these without using them. You might think you'll just walk around with these until I decide what to use them on. But you don't want to do that because there are only seven of them. You can get most set seven per scenario. Here we've got four to spend. So we need to spend them so that we can get new ones. And we need to spend it before before we start the next mission. So I think we're meant to spend them now without looking at the next mission, I'm pretty sure. So assuming we want to use these for upgrades. Oh, in fact, look, it is actually an action. So probably you have to take this during play, but I believe we were meant to do this before we ended. So I, I think we're going to do these now rather than wait for preparation, because I think when you prepare, they un that's when things unblock. So if we don't use them now, we're not going to get to. So we're going to use these right now. We have four of them. That means we can do four upgrades. We're just going to pretend we did these at the end of last session. OK, so four upgrades, and then we're going to block these. Each one gets to move one space on the destiny map. So here we are. So this is a tough decision. Let's go over what we're thinking is. We started here and we went, we built buildings. Two buildings, then we upgraded our action selection, another building, action selection, action selection. That let us do a better job of getting extra action cards. And we built a building that makes those, these even more powerful. So the path we chose gave us extra action cards and three building upgrades. We were also thinking, hey, let's head towards this 301 out of curiosity to see what this is. Is this some cool side quest? Like there's a couple of these special numbers. And we were curious what they are. The feathers are map cards. So if we want to understand some interesting place in the world, we should go. 
we could try to get feathers. This lets you throw away a card from your hand. Two cards. So you could call out weak action cards and get with no successes and no symbols and get make your deck better. It's tempting though to, we were headed towards this, but this isn't very exciting. These are good. So that's, that's a reasonable path. But then the other thing we could do is we could go all in on buildings and go one, two, three. We can go, we don't have to go in a line. We can go anything that's connected. So if we wanted to do four building upgrades, we could absolutely do that. And it's tempting. And then if we decide on building upgrades, we're going to have to talk about what building upgrades. So maybe, let's see, Cody has joined us. Maybe we should look at these buildings and talk about them. Because this is, in some way, some of the most compelling part of this game. This is another reason why I want to play. It's, this part is sort of addictive. So if we look at the buildings, I see my cameras don't. Okay, if we look at the buildings, which ones are appealing? These very cheap, Jonathan pointed out, these very cheap buildings that upgrade the community every scenario, every preparation phase. So if we're, they get expensive if you want to double up, but the first one, like if you imagine we have seven more scenarios in this threat, then checking these four buildings would give us seven defense, seven influence, seven book, and seven production by the time we got to the end. So doing these early really gives us compound interest on these community items. On the other hand, there are some other exciting things, like we've got this mystery building, and doing that not only gets us one of these mystery buildings, but lets us see what the other mystery buildings are available. So knowing that early is kind of nice. Jonathan was liking this guild. Every time you check uh, upgrade for death for, to upgrade your community by two, you get some bonuses. This doesn't appeal that much to me. I think for three, I'd much rather put them here and then avoid these completely and let them grow on their own. The other thing that's very appealing to me is this tavern that lets us do side quests. And then... There's things that let you get your companions back and things that let you get an animal, which is very appealing, this animal to me. On the other hand, the animal says, everyone returns all their animals and then you take one new animal. So it feels like the pen just ensures you always are walk going around with an animal, but maybe if you get your own animal, it doesn't do that much. Unless it's some, like, super good animal. And I was saying, I don't think we should allow ourselves to take the cemetery. Since we're playing on an easy mode, it's much more likely that we'll return each quest with some energy. So that feels like a little bit like cheating. Market seems actually good in getting barter cards. A lot of people we meet seems to seem to want to barter. So that's useful as well. Could use the library to get books. So I guess the things here that, it, that are exciting for me are putting in early effort here. If we're going to do these, we should do them very soon so that we can get our compound interest. We could do all four of these right now. And then we wouldn't have to worry about doing them more in the future. 
Um, this mystery building is quite appealing. This one was super useful to us. This one gave us a friend that came along with us, the apprentice arcanist, who was incredibly useful for us. And if we could get someone who's good at fighting and strength, that would be amazing. Um, you can't get a companion from the bathhouse. But you could, we could get animals from the pen. That's kind of appealing. I mean, we could get an animal that was strong at biting. That would help round out our strength. All right, let's see what the chat wants. John says, it's tempting to just shoot to 301. We could do it with four. Boy, you guys want to go for the number, huh? I mean, I was excited about that, too, at some point. But, um, I mean, the buildings let us get our compound interest. This is, this is going to be some side quest. I wonder if we don't need to get stronger first. Maybe we need to, maybe we need to get ourselves strong first by building some useful buildings. An animal, don't you think? And then when we get stronger, we can go out there. Like, I think 301 is going to be some interesting little side quest or thing, but it's not necessarily going to make us stronger. I feel like the more we can build buildings first, the better. Jonathan says, I think it will be a reward, not a side quest. You mean just give us a nice, strong, powerful card? That is tempting. But boy, if you're wrong. This feels like a waste. I think if it, for me, I think if it were me, I would get those building upgrades first and put them all on this. Get four building upgrades and then let those stats build over time. and then not have to worry about them. Although I accept that that's kind of going against what I said about getting strong first. Um, but you guys want to see what the number is. I guess an advantage of the number is if it is a nice strong buff, then we could head towards all of them. All right, what does the channel want to do? I would vote for the four buildings and then not have to worry about that going forward. But I can see wanting to see what this number is. All right, what's it going to be? 
Perry says, conservative choice is building up, right? Jonathan, what do you think? What's your final decision? You want to get this 301? John says, let's get the 301. All right, we're going with Jonathan. So we're going... Let's do a different color for now. Jonathan wants that 301. Okay, so here we go. We're doing this. We're getting a building. We're getting action cards, and we're getting 301. All right, we'll at least see what that is. That's our four Hope Reborn, which go become blocked. All right, so first thing is to discard a card. So let's take a look at our cards and see which ones are the worst that we don't want. There was a couple, there was one that we never used because it was too confusing or too situational. So one reason to get rid of cards is that they have no successes and no symbols. That's pretty useful. Where's the cards that were part of Arthen's hand? These here. Let's see. There's one really weird one. This is not so good. This is a card that lets you shield one attack by using a symbol. That's pretty. It's got one success on it, but not that good. That's pretty great. Top five, add one to your hand. Pretty good. Telekinesis is pretty good. Draw three less cards is pretty useful. Camouflage. You may not take the flying action if you exceed the maximum carried weight. This lets you run. And this would be like a Hail Mary to escape. That's pretty useful. Uh, we definitely want that. This is the other weird one. It says, during the gear set setup, return the card that shows a forced fight. Take a 13, try your luck. If you're jinxed, you lose three life points and take a three card. This is a very weird card. Uh, it feels like it could get you out of a, a jam where you have to fight something. You can completely avoid fighting it like an enemy that you would normally have to fight. You just get rid of that card that seems super powerful. I don't even think you have to get lucky for it. You just automatically throw it out. That could be like a multi-step fight. Like some huge fight that it's forcing you to take with some monster. You completely get rid of it and then you try your luck, and if you get lucky, nothing happens. If you get unlucky, you lose some life points and get injured. So you could get pretty badly injured, and you can't do it as the reach. But boy, that's a hard card to have in your hand, though. It's like useless most of the time. I don't like those situational cards. 
And then this is an efficient rest card. That's not that useful. Although when you rest, you do get rid of things. Oh, you can rest to get rid of an illness. This one is not that useful. It's half a star. It's a flag, which we can never count on because we don't have many flags in our deck. We have to spend a symbol to ignore something that would make us discard cards, which is very rare. And its benefit is mostly when you're playing multiple players. I suggest we get rid of this. I suggest we get rid of this. It's a terrible card. It's got half a success, a symbol that we cannot uh, rely on because we have so few of them. That makes it very useless to us. We can never plan on or hope to draw it. It's a card that's good when you're multiplayer. And it's a benefit that we have very little use for. So that's the card we're going to get rid of. This one could be save our life one day. All right, so this is the card we're going to get rid of. So, but we took this one. Why did we take this? No, it was it was randomly given to us. It's, we didn't take it. It was randomly given to us. Cody says spare. We get rid of two. Oh, thank you. We get rid of two. You're right. Okay, so we're getting rid of fortitude for sure. Spare no effort, says Cody. Let me see what spare no effort is. Oh, let's see. Spare no effort. This is the other one you want to get rid of. It's got a strength symbol, which we can't depend on. Draw one additional card and reveal it. That is not useless. Don't forget, very often we get something that says you can only draw X cards. You can only use X cards. I guess this one doesn't let you use the additional card. That's not very useful. You've got a good point. That's not very useful. The only nice thing about it is you could decide at the end to draw it instead of in the beginning, which is kind of useful. It's not a great card, but it's not terrible. This is a pretty useless card. Jack of all trades just gets us one symbol. We never only have one card in our hand. However, it does have a star and a half. This is not very useful. Keep one extra card. We rarely need that. There no effort. Not a crazy card. This seems worse to me, though. The only reason, though, it does have a success on it. You might have a point that it's nice to get rid of these cards with only with the bad success on it. Spare no effort. Could it be used to get two rewards at the end of a fight? Could this be used to get rid of two rewards at the end of a fight? No. I mean, this just lets you keep one extra card of those you've drawn when you want to check successes. Lets you keep it in your hand. All right. I think there's some sense to be had to get rid of these two cards. They're low successes. They're symbols that, like, we care about strength, but we can't rely on our strength symbols. 
All right, we're going to get rid of these two. We're going to get rid of those two. Okay. It's been decided. Bear no effort and fortitude. I still think this is kind of useful, but it's not that great. It's nothing we couldn't do ourselves by drawing an extra card. So actually, it's not that great. All right, so these get returned. Put them in the advanced skills. We put them in advanced skills. Where do we put them? They're not upgrades. What are they? They're, oh, they're Arthur. They're A for Arthur. Okay, fine. Great. Okay, Arthur. We didn't like your personality, so we returned your cards. Um, okay, so that was that. Now we get a one building upgrade, one point. Where do you want to put it? I have a suggestion. I suggest we put it in the gallows and up our influence. Start increasing our influence right away. That's the one stat that we have use for in Cal, and that could be like our timer. When our stat gets high enough, we'll head over to Cal. That's a compromise too, because I wanted to build all four of these guys, and you guys made me go that. I'm going to choose that. Gallows. During the preparation phase. So, and we can start making use of that right away. So, I'm going to add to our reminders of what to do at the beginning of each prep stage. Okay, that's our gallows. And then. Lastly, we get some new action cards, which is good because we threw away two. We would normally get four, but because of our building upgrade that Jonathan had us get, the Academy, we get eight. So eight advanced cards. There are so many. Okay. All right, 45 minutes in, we're still upgrading. That's just the way it goes here. Okay, eight. Since I haven't shuffled these super thoroughly, I'm just gonna take them from random way. Okay. Remember, we have this horrible ring, the ring of repentance, that makes reflex cards very bad for us, so we're not going to be taking any of those. Jonathan says, I don't really care about spare no effort, but just as a rule question, would the result potentially give us reward cards? Could the spare no effort get you double the rewards at the end of a fight? I thought I answered that. The the spare no effort card that we returned, its power, let's take a look at it again. At any time during the result step, draw one additional card and reveal it. It's only for drawing a card from your action deck and adding it to the result. So, it doesn't even let you use it if you if you have a red chain limited action. But what it would be for is, let's say you said, I think we can get, we need one success, we're going to draw three cards. So you draw your three cards, and then you didn't get your success. This would allow you to now, after the fact, say, I'm going to draw one more. So it's nice, you could just keep, it would let you constantly draw less cards than you need. Because you know that if you need to, you can draw one more. 
after the fact. So it is quite useful. It would let you be more... Uh, it would let you take more risk in the number of cards you drew, knowing that if you had this in your hand, you could always trigger it. In fact, I love cards like that, that let you play a little more risky because you know you can use this to save you the first time it happens. Let me think of, I got talked into that too quickly. Let me, let me think about if something would be better. What about this card instead? We have a lot of fighting cards. No, that's pretty good, actually. I'm having very second thought about Spare No Effort. Look at the top three, put them back in the same order. That's useful. That's useful. Block picking, we decided we like that. This is our Hail Mary. I really don't love this card. It just feels like we're never going to use this, and it depends on luck. I wouldn't mind getting rid of fight. Although, yeah. This is another Hail Mary card. We so rarely use this. In fact, walking is not bad because it lets you draw cards. I wouldn't mind getting rid of that either. This is pretty useless. That's pretty useless too. Okay, we're gonna, I wanna keep this card. Bear no effort just because it lets us be a little more risky with our card draws. You only have to use it in the emergency. So this seems like it's so unlikely to be useful to us. And save your energy. That's pretty useless too. You can only use it once. I'd rather get rid of save your energy. I'd rather get rid of save your energy. I'm gonna take spare no effort back into our hand. Okay. All right, let's look at our eight cards. So we get to choose two of these. We get to choose two, is that right? One player gains two, okay. And our upgrade lets us take eight. All right, so let's see. So remember that, look, we don't have flags. We don't have fists. There is, There are two fists here, but it feels like we're never gonna get enough fists to count on this. Unfortunately, it is our strength. It is a strength thing. And we do have some ability to get wild cards. We're really hurting for strength. So I guess that's an option, but it doesn't have very many successes either. And at least one other character is involved. Okay, so for sure we don't want that. Let's see what else we got. Music, brains. 
lets you draw two extra cards, and it's a wild card. That's pretty useful. Uh, we have lots of arcane, so this is pretty darn useful. We often get this symbol. However, it's only for casting spell. No. Of the following action. Okay, and then here it is. When you cast a spell, you can cast a spell whenever you want. Okay, what do you do? You cast a spell. You get to keep one of the cards you draw. You can block a companion to gain life points. Look, that's the, I don't like that. We don't want to block companions. Okay. What about this one? You may apply the following effect during an action you're involved in, even if you're not the active player. Okay, not that useful, but you can trigger a wild card or draw three less or ignore minus X. Boy, that's pretty useful. A little bit tempting, although we don't need flags and it's not, it doesn't have full successes. What about this one? You need a projectile for this. We're having a hard time finding projectiles. This just lets us draw less cards. I don't love that. These are our symbols. It is a success, and it lets us get extra success. The only problem is these are things we don't often get the chance to do. But this is kind of useful. This three combination, if we can build cards that make use of this, then our deck becomes pretty strong. So I'd be inclined to take this one. I wish there was a better way for us to get strength. I think our solution to strength is going to have to be to find some magic weapon that gives us strength. I don't love any of these, to be honest. However, you could see how this card, you could use it to trigger. Like, this would give you an extra success right off the bat. Wild card. I guess these are the two that I would like to take. Because this was our theory. Our theory is, if we focus on these two symbols and get them on a lot of cards, and then we have a way to turn them into wild cards, that's a pretty strong ability. So... Rather than divert, getting a diverse set of symbols, we should focus on things that let us turn wild cards into the symbol we want. So I'm inclined to take these two, although you could make the case that we should go for this kind of a strategy. Try to wild card symbols and then get something that's strength. Is an enchanted projectile acting like its own bow? When you apply the fire effect, oh, assume you have a selected card with projectile. When you apply the following effect, assume you have a card with the keyword projectile. Well, that changes things up, doesn't it? Because we have another card that wants projectiles too, don't we? Whoa, good catch. Okay, let's take this one then. It's got our symbol, it's got a success, and it lets us turn these into successes. It does get blocked though. It's a super powerful card, but we want more of those. Okay. So we're going to take Enchanted Projectile. 
Uh, we don't need more digging. Let's throw that one away. All right, so enchanted projectiles coming with us. Very good. Very good catch, Jonathan. So now. Should we, which of these? Find the results step. Life points. This is, this is, no, I don't like it. All right, which, we're going to take Enchanted Projectile. Which of these other four do we want? We can try to get wild cards to turn strength, but right now this is pretty useless to us. In fact, you can see the only card we have with strength is on this card. So we're never going to be able to use them both. So this one that's not does not feel right to me. But and these feel like we're already pretty good at this stuff. Although it does give us two symbols that we like. This and a success. But this one does give us a wild card. I like that. Or this or this. So you're going to have some use for it. This one, these are very rare. I think we get rid of this. Although I do like the wild card. But I don't think it's good enough. So maybe not this one. All right, we're taking Enchanted Projectile. Now we could take a success and a two symbols that we like. But we're not often going to have use for this. I'll let the chat decide which of deceptive appearance or support. <clears throat> this is a pretty good symbol card to not keep in our hand. You think we should keep deceptive appearance? Cody likes deceptive appearance. Okay. There it is, then. That's done. All right, we've made our choices. We've taken Enchanted Projectile, which is a nice weapon. Gives us a projectile weapon, which is quite useful. It even ignores evasive. <coughs> and we've got this two-symbol card and both of them have successes on them both of them have arcane let's just try to find a strength card that uses arcane okay so these now come into our deck so i'm going to put them in sleeves a good tip about sleeving the seventh continent cards is to sleeve them on the side you might normally think about sleeving them on the top but if you sleeve them on the side you can flip through them without them opening up and shuffle them down without them opening up okay so these go in our deck we've still got a black card and now we're finally ready after one hour to to the what we've all been waiting for, the 301. The slave gardener you once were is long gone, replaced by a wise and talented leader. Take this card, give it to the player of your choice. Replaced by a wise and talented leader. Okay, here we go. 301, the specific card. There's only one of them. Let's see what it is together. You're doing well thanks to the experience you've gained from overcoming 
so many obstacles and trials, the maximum number of cards you may have in your hand is increased by one. And every time we take any action, we can keep one more. Any time we get to keep a card, we can keep one more card? Is that right? <laughs> That's pretty serious. We've now got a hand size of five for the rest of the game. And any time we're allowed to keep a card, we can now keep one extra card. <laughs> that's pretty strong. Mm, that's a pretty compelling reason to go for all these numbers. That is pretty serious. And notice it doesn't have a keyword. It's not a blessing. We've encountered cards that say, throw away any blessings you have. This is not. This is a locked purse, but without any keywords, which means nothing can make it go away. Looks like Jonathan's intuition was right. That is pretty strong. That's going to let us bring more cards into our hand and find the cards we need. That's pretty good. All right. Doesn't weigh anything. All right, that's pretty good. That's pretty exciting. Are we misreading that in any way? Maximum number of cards went up by one, and any time we take an action that lets us keep, lets us keep one of the cards we drew, we can keep an extra card. That's very strong. Okay, good work, Jonathan. Are you happy with the 301? All right, we've done our upgrades. We're ready to read the introduction to the next mission, but it's been an hour, so we got to take a break first. I'll see you in eight minutes, and we'll start our next scenario.
Okay, we're back. We're ready to get started with our second scenario in Didacum's Awakening. Um, I'm putting you all on notice 
you have to help me remember there are cards in here, or should we not even use this? Because I am afraid we're going to forget about these cards. We'll keep them in here for now. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> Get fed or die trying. Okay, return, each player returns all cards with the keyword temporary. Do we have any temporaries? I think the temporaries are like when you get tired or ill. I don't think any of our items are that. Let's see. Whoops. Look what we lost. All right, well, what can you do? This goes to show you that um, we might use these for a success. Don't put off, don't put off using these too often. We've lost blessings and we've lost temporaries. Uh, in our notes document, we might want to note that at the beginning of a scenario, you may lose all your temporaries, 153 and 154. All right. Well, that's life. Unblock all of your hand cards. Okay. So we did have one hand card blocked, which is this double thing. That's pretty useful. So that's no longer blocked. Shuffle all cards in their discard pile back into their action deck. Block all cards with the keyword companion. So you don't get to keep companions. And what about these? We use these. Let's see. It should tell us to put these back, but all right, fine. Shuffle all the cards back into our discard. discard. All right, I'm going to shuffle these while we read this. The group watches you anxiously until Thurder reluctantly steps forward, urged by his comrades. We've just been robbed. While you were away looking for the source of the smoke, about 20 armed men showed up to the camp. Killian soldiers, judging by their equipment, probably the ones who attacked the water bank convoy. They told us they work for Necro Druid Dodicum, whose citadel was relatively undamaged during the reversal. They suggested that they tolerated our newfound freedom, but if we didn't meet their demands, they'd put us back in captivity, or worse. The gang was small, but they had weapons. We didn't dare oppose them, and you weren't here. They took most of the food in their cart, warning us that they would confiscate even more next time. I'm sorry, what's, what's going to happen to us? You silently rant. Took you so much effort to build up that food supply, and now you're back to square one. You dismiss the group and go to the storeroom, where you spend a moment surveying the situation. Thurder was not exaggerating. The soldiers took everything they could carry. Dealing with the looters will have to wait. The priority is to produce enough to feed everyone. If your provision score is three or lower, take a 129. Well, our production score is three or lower. Gonna get upgraded sooner or later, but not yet. So we gotta take a 129. Is that good or bad? You feel a profound weariness. Discouragement. If you want to return this, you must block one Hope Reborn card. That's unfortunate. This is not very fun. Whenever we walk, you have to get rid of all blessings? Whenever you walk, you can't walk without getting rid of blessings? That's ridiculous. Of course, we don't have any blessings. It got thrown, it got thrown away. We have to block 
Hope Reborn card, which we spent all of our Hope Reborns. That's unfortunate. All right. Uh, when you emerge, Ephim, a young blind woman, is waiting for you outside. I heard our supplies are low, and I think I can help you. As a child, I used to farm with my grandfather. His vegetable garden was so lush that it was envied by everyone. He had a secret. Every old man has one. But he, unlike the others, kept it to himself. Do you know about marsh bugs? They build their nests from a kind of wax that makes an excellent fertilizer. Some people even believe it has magical properties. But there's a catch. These insects live underground, so there's no way to detect them except with the big beak bird, which can reach their galleys, galleries with their long beaks. You need well-honed hearing to recognize the bird's call. My hearing is excellent. I could help you find a big beak. We could go to the mire and bring back enough fertilizer to grow countless crops in record time. What do you say? You have no choice but to accept FM's proposal. If you do not find some way to refill the community's reserves and prevent famine, everything you have worked for over the past months will fall apart. Okay, so our goal is to find the marsh bug nest. All right, here's the quest we're on. So if you see a card with that, if we see a card with that symbol, we have to take that one. Okay, we have to find marsh bug nests. Each nest corresponds to one objective card. When you read the epilogue, you will need at least three objective cards or two objective cards if we can get our provision score to six or higher. So we're going to need three. Okay, now we're in the preparation stage. Tells us to take card 166. Mm -hmm. This is going to be maybe some book information about the marsh bugs or big beak. A young woman accompanies you on a search for marsh bug nests. Only she can recognize. Why is. Oh, I should have swapped this. Okay. Only she can recognize the whistle of the big beak bird, which will help you locate the nest. Here she is. FM the blind. If you become unconscious, give this to a conscious character. If this gets discarded or blocked, you won't be able to find the marsh bug nest and you should return to the citadel. Okay, so now let me uh, remind you of something. In the multiplayer game, it's possible for one player to lose all their health and become unconscious, and the others can save them. In a solo game, that doesn't happen. As soon as you become unconscious, you lose. You lose or you go back. I guess you lose or you die or something. So anyway, if we become unconscious, it's irrelevant. She's on her own. There's the big beak, big beak bird. And here's a new action she provides. You can you all have to do it together. That's what the red stars are, the red stairs. You can you have a dialogue. You may not take the following action unless a big beak bird can be seen on your terrain card. So keep your eyes open for the big beak bird we find him, then we can have her listen to the song and we read the dialogue bearing the same number as your terrain card. And she's a companion. Okay, she, at least we don't have to carry her on our shoulders. And let me put this red card out with our ring. We've now got two bad things on us. Where's our... Ring of Repentance. Let's put that out where we can remember that these bad things happen. Okay, for this scenario, Ground Shiver is still level 3, what it was before. Set all life counters back to 0, then each player goes up to what it should be. Alright, so we start at 45 again. Okay, nice healthy thing. Each player draws two cards from their action deck, which I've shuffled. Each player may unbox some or all of their cards with the keyword companion. For each card unblocked, they lose two life points. Okay, well, that's nice to know. 
The only thing that's a little confusing about it is that at the start it said unblock all your hand cards and this says each player may unblock. I guess some of the cards that get blocked are not action hand cards and they wouldn't reset. Okay. Return all the Hope Reborn cards that are blocked. I see, that was our... So those Hope Reborns that I... No, I didn't put them back. So now we put them back. Okay, fine. So the Hope Reborns now become available to us again. One looks like there are seven or eight of them. Okay. Remember to look up your side quest, the cards in the world map, and the effects of your built buildings. Put a 75 into play. Each player places their figure on it. Okay, so we're going to do, we're going to get out the 75. And that's our hand right here. Um, now let's do our starting stuff. So our upgrades for preparation are the smithy, the arcane well, and the gallows. And the gallows here. Okay, so starting with the gallows building, the gallows building is what gives us plus one influence. So we're going to start out by gaining an influence. Okay, that's the gallows. And now we've got the arcane well. Let's see what the arcane well does. One day, timid girl pointed to the ground and said, we must dig here. Okay, so we got a magical well. During the preparation phase, you are at the citadel. One player may take a 246 card or unblock an arcane apprentice arcanist. So we have an apprentice arcanist. She doesn't block though. She, oh, it's a companion. Blocks all cards. So actually she got blocked at the start of the game. Block all their cards with the keyword companion. However, we could unblock for two life points. So I think we're probably going to unblock her. But let's see. Okay, that's an interesting mechanic. We block all the companions and then we can pay to, to unblock them. However, what, what could we do here? We could use the arcane well to take another apprentice. And then we can return one of them, leave them at the Citadel, and take a 349 card. So surely it's worth two points to bring her back on her own, 43. So I dropped us back two points. Check Jesse. I think the Arcane Well says you can unblock the apprentice for free. All right, let me put it back at 45. Okay, let me see. What does the Arcane oh what does the Arcane Well? Yes, it does say we can unblock her for free. You're right. But wouldn't we rather take a second companion? Like pay to unblock her and then get another one. She is, that's what 246 is, an apprentice. It doesn't say we can only have one. So why don't we pay two to get her back and then get another one? So yeah. 43, I mean, for two life points, which is six cards, we can wake her up, get her back into our group. 
and then use the arcane well to summon another one. Yeah? How many are there? What? How can there only be the one? Doesn't make sense, does it? There's only one? What kind of nonsense is that? Well, there is a diamond that tells us they're limited, but I thought there'd be a couple at least. Ugh. Thought we could bring two out. All right, so I don't like this idea. Well, we can send her to the city. We can leave her there and take a 349, but I think we kind of need her. Yeah, we kind of need her. Especially since she gives us these symbols. And we had a place to get. So I think in, instead of leaving her back home, I'm going to take my wife back. You could make the case that we should do it once just to see what this is. But is this is probably going to be giving something to the Citadel, right? Which, we need help ourselves. All right, we're taking her with us. She was very useful last time. We can't afford it. We can't afford it. So, Arcane Well just saved us two life points. Well, I guess it, it got us her in the first place, so that's not nothing. Okay, and then we've got the Smithy building. Boy, we're still doing our prep phase. Okay, but that's okay. This is the fun part. Okay, if you're at the Citadel, one person takes a 190, 190 card, which is the Gladius weapon we already have. It's a weight of two. Or unblock up to two cards, weapon or armor or shield. I don't know if this is any use to us anymore. 190. Well, there are more 190s. They're all gladiuses. Let me see what our weight is here. Two, four, five, six, seven. So we actually have enough strength to carry this. We're not going to, you can't use two at once though, but I guess we might as well take it, right? Maybe we can trade it with someone. Uh, let's see. Actually, the ring is a weight of one. Let me just make sure we're underweight. Two, four, six, eight. Whoops. Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Nope. All right. Gladius is going back. I spoke too soon. We don't have the. We don't have the weight for it. We're already at ten. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. And I'm going to put Ring of Repentance back so we make sure it's weight. All right. So we're going to have to start dropping stuff already. We're at max weight. It's too bad that upgrade didn't give us a, give, a, give us a weight improvement, too. All right. Are we ready to actually play the game? I say that as a joke, but really the upgrade is some of the most enjoyable part. All right, here we go. Let's get our table set up properly. All right, did we look at our hand? Where's my hand camera? Oh, that's, that's weird, isn't it? I see. Why did I not anticipate that? I'm going to have to adjust that <laughs> during the break. Uh, because that is confusing. Okay. Um, oh, I suppose I could do it, fix it this way. Okay. 
Does the world map show where the marsh mentioned in the intro is? That's a good question. Let's turn this over and then we'll take a look at it. All right, let's look at our hand though. Deceptive appearance. If we need to sneak or negotiate or act, then we can turn these things into successes. And if we have a weapon, we can turn these into successes. That's pretty good. Sneak attack, that's pretty good. All right, let's turn over this card and then we'll... The Citadel stands majestically before you across the distance that still separates you from the camp. Noises and the clamor of voices reach your ears. Clearly there is some great activity over there. Now, we did take photographs of our previous cards. This would be exactly where since we're looking for a bird on a terrain, if we consulted our previous map playthroughs maps, we might notice some birds on those cards. We would know where to find them. But let's bring take a look at what we have. So this is our card before. We saw this before. This is the exact same card we started out on during our last mission. I guess as long as we're starting from the Citadel, we're going to keep starting out on this card. So let me bring this over here. Okay, so here we are. Now, where does it say we hear some activity? Citadel stands across the distance from the camp. Over where? Over here? I'm not sure what it's where it's referring to. Across the distance that separates you from the camp. What camp? This camp? But oh, we're right here. I don't quite get that. Does anyone understand that better than me? So here is where we went before, and down here is where the ballista is, which we might want to check out. Can I fix that thing? I'm going to see if I can't fix this while you're live with me here. Oh, I see. I was just zoomed up too far. And I was in the other camera. Okay, fine. And we'll just leave it. Okay, fine. That's not a bad view. Um, okay. Where is our world map? We also have our plastic map. So she said the marshes, huh? What does she say? Search the marsh. Okay, where is the marsh? We've got the bottomless sea, the lookout, the burning bramble wood, the guardian, the sunset mountain, the mire. I don't see any marshes. Might it be on our feather card? Let me get the feather card. So this was here. You see any marsh here? Crevasse. Strange slab. I don't know where the marsh is. River, woods, perch. Puddle. There's no marsh on the map. We're going to have to find it ourselves, I guess. 
you might guess that it's near near the mire mire marsh marsh I think in the intro it was referred to as the mire and the marsh as Jonathan We could go to the mire and bring back enough fertilizer to grow crop. All right, so the mire it is. So we're going to go south. Maybe we'll check out the ballista and see if we want to uncover it now. All right, here we go. Good, good work, everyone. All right, so let's put in these Places. We've got one to explore here, one to explore here. All right. Oh, where's my stickers? But I don't use the stickers for the temporary places. Okay, fine. All right, well, let's go south. Yeah. So from here, we're going to do this action. We have a ground shiver of three or higher, so it's free to turn this over. Okay. Loud breathing sounds cause you to hurry. Two men are trying to rescue their donkey whose hindquarters have disappeared into a wormhole. The animal's pulling a kind of homemade sled with a lot of wooden planks piled on top. Every time the sled moves, you seem to hear bells ringing. You'd rather go on your way, discard this. Okay. Well, surely we're going to try to help them, right? They're right near our citadel. Okay, banish this and read 48. Okay, so this is getting banished. Keep your eyes open for those birds. All right, 48. Muck is on our side. Help us get her out of here before she falls into that hole. If we lose her, we're finished. The sled is full of planks and stakes with little bells attached, obviously taken from the singing lane. What are you going to do with all of this? That's us in bold. What are we going to do with it? Uh, now is not the time. Just give us a hand. You grab the donkey by the harness. Well, this is the thing we're bad at. Strength. Fortunately, we can draw as many cards as we want, so we're okay. Do we have a weakness card? I don't think we do. The discouragement, is this a weakness card? No. No, it's not. Oh, it's a, this kind of card. That's the first time we've seen a card like that. Put that up there. Okay, and our ring isn't weakness, right? No. Okay, so we don't have a weakness. That's good. We're going to encounter this now is the time. We only need two successes. Okay. What should be the rule here? Should you not look at those results until you after you do it? I don't know. That's a hard thing. Okay, uh, so we're going to do that zero two. I just want to look up singing lane. The singing lane, oh, that's the that's the walkway with the bells on it that protects you from the burrowers. Okay, so for two successes, four cards should be, three cards should be sufficient, but we can't, we don't have anything to fix it. So I think we got to, we want to succeed at this. Maybe we'll draw four. Two successes. I mean, we'll almost certainly get. No, not almost certainly. All right, we want this. We want this donkey. All right, four cards. Here we go. Well, let me just see. 
We have anything that helps. For every two cards you choose to discard from your hand, get an arcane symbol. Anything else we have? Let's just keep in mind. Fighting. What about this? It's a strength test. This just says we don't need to draw as many cards. That doesn't help us. On the other hand, what's this? Draw two less and turn those into successes. That's not useful to us. Okay. Here we go. We're drawing four cards just to be sure. All right, there's our one success. Here's our two success. So that's enough. That's all we needed. We don't get to keep any of these, unfortunately. So they're all discarded. That was overkill. We didn't need to draw that many, but we succeeded. Okay. So you pull with all your might, freeing the animal's back legs, and finally it scrambles out of the hole. 75. It would be great if we could keep this donkey for us, for ourselves. Here we go. It says, if you're playing scenario that, which we're not, otherwise a thousand thanks. With your help, we'll be able to continue building a real house. Everyone keeps getting sick in our drafty tent. Take this, you've earned it. The two men bid you farewell before leaving, guiding their donkey and its heavily loaded sled. Get plus one influence and take a 199 and a 99. Well, that's pretty good. So 199, God damn it. I'm going to shuffle these 199s. We have I've already had this. There's a lot of 199s. I just should have drawn one at random. Okay. Okay, here's our 199. What have they given us? Hey. A cape that has been patched many times. Immediately after this is revealed, take a 13 card to try your luck. If you're jinxed, the cape is torn and it gets blocked. Otherwise, it can be used for shields. Okay. It's fabric. Okay, we have something that lets us recover fabric, so it's not the end of the world if we get this. If we get this. Okay, let's take our 13. So I sleeve the 13s. I gotta... I gotta put this so it's not over my head. I gotta find it, gotta do it differently. Does the cape weigh anything? Thankfully not. Okay, here's our 13. And if it's that red one, I'm not gonna be happy. Okay, we're jinxed. All right, and then it took your turn. I do not like that jinx thing. All right, so this card is immediately damaged. So I'm putting it in the blocked area. We can unblock it. We have a way to unblock it. Putting the 13s back. I had an idea of homemade variant, like a building you could build that lets you draw the 13s twice. Okay, uh, and now we get a 199. That's what we took, and a 99. And so we now get... Uh, did I take the 99 or the 199? I think I took the 199. Okay, so the 99 we get. Oh, that's our hope reborn. Uh, that's pretty good. That's our upgrade, but we could also use it to get rid of that. This. So if we block our uh our hope reborn. 
we would not have to give up blessings when we walk. We don't have any blessings currently, so we could just wait on that. This is, feels like it's going to be a hard one to remember to use. So let's try to remember that card is out there. All right, well, we got a Hope Reborn. That's good. I'll put it over here. I can see. Well, let me give us let me give us the upgrade to our in influence. Okay, we're at five influence now. All right, I can see we're going to forget this. I can just feel it. I can feel that we're going to forget these things, especially this one. So I'm thinking we got to take these out and keep them on the table. Otherwise, we're just, maybe the mushrooms can stay in. Let's just remember to look for mushrooms. But the ones that will save our lives, we better have on the table. All right. So that was our 81. What's happened? That was our, eight, our our exploration here. So let's bring out 81, which we have seen before. There's our ballista. And we'll thicker it. So we did this before. We came down here and that was the ballista. And then last time we went this way, we got on a boat and went to the city. But now we want to go down here toward the mire. So let's walk here, I guess. We don't have any blessings. So even though we're discouraged, doesn't affect anything. All right, so we're going to walk here. The walk is a draw one card, keep one card. However, if we wanted two more cards for our hand, we could just draw two cards right now. But I guess we'll get it in time. Let's just draw one and keep one. Anticipation. During the consequence step, shuffle one card you have revealed back into your action deck instead of discarding it. Instead of discarding it. During the consequence. So after we found out That seems very powerful, doesn't it? Like we draw a card, we see if we get a success, and then rather than throwing it out, we can just put it back in. It seems like that would keep our energy from, keep us from using too much energy. I like that. Okay, uh, we're on this square now. I wonder if, I wonder if using the flat token would be easier because I could put the. I see, I turned off this. Let me turn this off for a second. I just wonder if taking our guy as a flat figure might be easier. Which one is he? Is this little boy. So if I take this little boy instead of this, I wonder if that makes it easier to put the dialogue book on the table. I'm going to try it. We'll just put this nearby. All right, so we're going south. But do you want to look at this ballista first? Before we said, John says, I think as we head south, we should probably clear as much of Fog of War as possible and keep our eye out for birds. That's a good point. 
That is a pretty good point. Okay, so let me bring out the Hogs of War stuff as we go. So there's one here, and there's one here, and I don't see any birds or mushrooms here, right? So let's, maybe we need to make a list of the things we're supposed to be keeping our eye out for. It's birds, mushrooms, and our dinosaur plant. Eyes open for birds, mushrooms, dinosaur plant. That's our, that's because of our strange mark and then numbers okay so we might want to add that to our notes at some point all right so barring that don't see any plants now i think we should get this ballista on the way back if we do it now it's just runs out of energy so let's just remember Let's remember that we're going to need a certain amount of energy. Or should we look at it so we know how much energy we need? Do you remember how much energy we needed for that, Ballista? I guess we have to look at it because we need to know. Because we're going to try to do it when we come back. So I'm going to draw a card. We don't need any successes. We don't need to keep it. But look, during the consequence step, shuffle one drawn card back into the action deck instead of using it. Oh, but then discard it. Okay, so for some reason we wanted this back in the action deck. We might use this, but we don't need it now. So I'm just going to discard that. Okay, so we're going to look at this thing just so that we make a note of... this ballista. Ballista is half buried in the ground. It seems to be relatively well preserved. Could be very useful in reinforcing the citadel's defenses. Okay, so it's a dig, but if we have artisan, otherwise we need, we're going to have to dig up 15 cards. So we'd certainly succeed. All right, so on our to-do list, We need plus 15 cards spare when we on our way home or plus five if we have an artisan. Okay, that's the ballista. So we definitely want to get this list on the way home. So try to make sure we have 15 left of our health when we come back. All right, so this card attaches here. If I had saved, if I had saved our previous map images, we could have done that for free. I'm going to start saving our maps better. All right, now where? So now we're going to go south. We've already been here. We know what's there, but we don't know if there are any birds there. But let's get. I think we should get to the. I think we should have already known if there's birds there if we look at our map. So I'm not going to open this one up. But what about this? Are these mushrooms? Are these red mushrooms? Where's our... What mushrooms are we looking for? No, two white-capped mushrooms. Okay. All right, let's look over here. Three or level, it's free. Okay. Oh, look at this. You know what this means. It could be great. It could be evil. Swarm of whitish ladybugs as big as your fist flutter a few feet from where you're standing. They seem excited about something buried there. So we take a 413. Is this what we always take a 413? There are no 413s. Take a 413. So we've already gotten as many unveilers as we had that's because we've got all these cards that have been banished so 
Is that right? No, I'm confused. Well, these are the cast cards. No. How could we be out of 413s? Because they're not in our hand. One was the ring. One was that ring, wasn't it? No, we got that from being... Got that from being unlucky. One was this amazing Leviathan. No, that's a 423. What's going wrong? 413 is the objective cards that explains the unveilers. Thank you. The 413 is the unveiler card. Okay, thank you. All right, so we don't need that. And then we bring out an unveiler onto this space. And we return this. No, this just goes into the back. Okay. All right, thank you. 185 comes out. Looks like you have to step over narrow precipices in some places to reach the next plateau. Luckily, the vegetation is sparse enough not to hinder your movement. Okay, so this is the new card that's come out. Very lush here. Uh, um, I don't see any numbers. I don't see any mushrooms. And I don't see any flying birds. But it looks a little dangerous here, to be honest. All right, so we just looked at it. However, there are some uh, ladybugs here. So, and then there's a level two. Over here, this gets a sticker. All right. Well, surely we're going to walk over onto this. Draw one card. We don't need a success. We just put it here. Now, do we want to use this to put it back into the action deck? I guess not. It's not success. Although we're going to run out of this, run out of hand size soon. All right, so here we are on plateau we can look at a tree a tree might be where we might see a bird nest let's look at this tree let's look at this tree so one card intuition just gonna throw this out to succeed. Can you keep the card when you walk? Do you not want that card in hand? Oh, you're right. We walked. We can keep the card when we walked. Thank you. Thank you very much. When you walk, you can keep a card. In fact, when you walk, we keep two cards, but we only drew one. Okay, so then for looking, though, we don't get to keep it. Thank you. All right, 227. What would I do without Jonathan and without this channel? I certainly wouldn't be playing the game. That's the answer. 227. There's two of them. Okay. I need to fix this thing. Uh, I'm going to see if I can fix it while you're here. I'll take a second here. Okay, bear with me. Scenes, 
sources overlay Mm -hmm. Why can't I put it on top of that? There it goes. Okay, we'll do it this way. And when it's on this screen, we'll make it more okay all right ashes from a campfire of been scattered by the wind and rain. Nearby benches, branches, have been piled up and stones laid out as seats. The camp seems entirely abandoned. Oh boy. If your defense score is seven or higher, it is not. One of your patrols cleaned up the area. Discard this. <laughs> okay. So now we've got our first feel for the defense actually helps us for fighting. Little wild animals. You're about to make a stop when a wild animal springs into view. So it's a forced fight. If we had that card that lets us run away, we could just run away without fighting this guy at all. On the other hand, when we kill him, we get a Hope Reborn, which is pretty nice. Okay, let's switch into hand view. All right, let's make our plan here. So it's got ambush. If the ground shiver is a level five or higher, it's not. So he doesn't have ambush or tough. It's just a normal fight with a weapon. If we succeed, we just jump down straight to this one. And we get to keep a card, but in our case, we get to keep two cards. Pretty good. One wound, that's not so bad. Okay, well, let's see. We have to do four hits on him. We get to keep two cards. We use a weapon. We can do this. That's pretty good. Let's take a look at our items here. Okay, so we've got a hoe, which gives us a success. Pretty good, but it's also useful for digging. We've got a card that lets us draw less. That's not something we're going to want to use. A flail that lets us turn three of any symbol into a success. Not that great. Here lets us draw and keep an extra card. So that's going to be useful. We're certainly going to try to use the Gladius, I think. Uh, we can't use that. The Leviathan is overkill. And here is our armor we can use to block some of those hits. If we have extra symbols to spare, which we probably won't. So maybe we shouldn't even bother because we don't want to lose that. Okay, so we're going to use this weapon, which lets us draw and use an extra one. Let's just use an extra one. So normally we would draw and use two. Now we can draw and use three. We're going to be able to keep one, which actually means keep two. We need four successes. We're probably not going to get a success from here. There's a good chance we'll get a success from here. But I think... 
I think four is probably safe. And worst case scenario, we won't get to keep any of these cards. Four and four. Um, we could use her ability if we need to which we could use to get extra successes. This is the kind of thing I love. So we're going to use the sneak attack to help us with this. And then if we don't get these on our own, we can use her to give us... No, actually, she gives us... She gives us this symbol. That's not what we need. That's not going to be useful to us. Um, three cards. We could certainly succeed in this. But maybe not with four. All right. If we draw five. Three gives us two. I think we could get this with five. Okay, here we go. So we get to keep three of these, and from those three, we need four successes. Okay, there's that. There's that. There's two. This is going to be a fail, I guess. Mm -hmm. Let's see, there's two, there's three, and we just need one more. Whoa, we just made it. So three cards, four successes. We just made it on our last card. Okay, so that was scary. Actually, these would have saved us, because we could have used them for this. Ah, uh, but we don't have to. That's the nice thing. We didn't have to prep this. It's not a weapon. This we prep. So we don't have to use this. Okay, good. All right. So we have succeeded. So we take a wound. We didn't, we weren't able to block that. Maybe we should have blocked it with this. But probably we should have. Probably we should have used this because there was a good chance we were going to get two random symbols, but I didn't. So we took a wound. Not the end of the world. We get to keep two of these cards, one plus our bonus. So which two do we want? Arcane Shock seems pretty amazing. Surely we want that. And then we could keep one more of these. Projectile. How about we take projectile instead of anticipation? So I've kept two cards of the four or five, thrown out one. In fact, during the consequence step, shuffle one card you have revealed back into your action deck instead of discarding it. So what we could do is, rather than discard this, let's use it. So we used this one. But one of these others, I'm going to shuffle back in. So instead of throwing this card out to get my hand size back down to five, I have used this card to take one of the ones we drew and didn't keep and put it back into the action deck. Okay. And then Jonathan reminded me I left one out here. Now we have to see if the if this breaks. So 
let's do this consequence step first. First step was four. We did that in one shot. It dropped down two to become a three and one. And now we can take as many attacks on this guy as we can. Each time we don't, if we don't get it down all the way, we're going to take a wound and lose three cards. Okay. Before we do that, however, we have to see if we're going to lose this sword. So we roll a die. If we get a one, it breaks. Okay, so it's a six, so it didn't break. Okay, so we still have our sword, and now we have to do another fight with this person. And we're going to, if we succeed, we, if we do it all in one shot, we get no wounds. So let's use this knife again, the Gladius. I suppose when we were deciding what to keep, we could have deliberately taken something for this fight. Okay, so what's nice about these cards, as opposed to the weapons, is we don't have to choose to use them yet. Only the weapon we have to choose. So we're going to use this weapon again, because we need to be able to draw more cards. We're going to try to do this in one shot. Look at this. If we need to, we can drink this, get these symbols, and then do three damage. So we can guarantee this success if we need to. But can we do... Can we do any better than drawing two cards to get three? That's unlikely. But we could probably pick it up with the symbol. I think maybe... Maybe that's good enough. We probably won't get it all from this. But we can certainly get it from one of our special cards. But should we... I wonder if we shouldn't use our... I wonder if... We shouldn't... What is this thing? No. Where is the hoe? Do you think we should take a take a chance and use this? Or well, we can't use both of these. All right, never mind. So I think this is good enough. I think we probably won't get three. Almost certainly won't get three. But, well, I wonder. Maybe instead, yes, we'll do it and we'll trigger this. Block this or lose one card. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, sorry, let, I apologize that this is taking so long, but let me just explain this. So we can only draw one card. We can only use one card to try to get to three. With the Gladius, we can use two cards, which would be very hard to get to three. But we can draw as many cards as we want. You can use the symbols on all those cards. So, because we've got weapons that are good at using symbols, I think what we'll do is we'll draw maybe four cards we might get lucky and succeed but surely we'll get enough symbols to make this work okay so that's one success all right so with two cards we cannot get ourselves the three successes 
Oh, can we? Actually, we can. We actually can, with two cards, get ourselves to three successes. Okay. So that's it. We killed it. Quite a bit, a few cards, but we didn't have to use any of our hand cards. So that worked out pretty well. We're playing it pretty safe with drawing cards. Now we have to see if this breaks. A die roll of one would break it. It didn't break. That's great. Okay, so we did it. Take O99 and banish this thing, whatever it is. It looks like a wild boar. Okay, so it's banished. And we get a 99, which we know what that is. That's our nice little Hope Reborn. That gives us upgrades. All good. All right, but boy, that takes a while to do that, huh? And uh, this guy's here. Wait, what was that? How did we get that guy? What brought him out? 227? Just looking at the tree brought this? Dear God. Just looking at a tree? Can we do 227 again? All right, look, if we want to, we can do 227 again. What do you think? So we looked at the tree. We brought out the boar. Can we do 227 again? Or is it going to be another creature we have to fight? I think we should do it again. Let's see what happens. Okay. It would not take much to get the campsite warmed up again, starting with a good fire. The flames crackle, radiating... Oh, oh, we have to succeed now. Okay, so this attaches as a permanent event here. All right. That was scary. That could have been another animal to fight. This game is willing to embrace some randomness because we could have gotten that the first time. All right, so we can do this test. Zero more cards, one success. Flames crackle, radiating a welcome warmth all around. Take a 49 card. Each involved character may return their exhausted card. Choose one card in the discard to add to their hand. That's pretty good. On the other hand, we could just wait, come back here when we get exhausted. Hey, look what I see. There's our mushrooms. We're going to eat some mushrooms today. All right. So do you see those are our mushrooms? And the rule about the mushrooms are, did you draw to peek in the woods again? You mean, did I pay for it? No, I didn't. Thank you. Uh, yes, throw that one out. Thank you. I had to pay. Jonathan's reminding me I had to pay to look in there. Okay. So now I see our mushroom. It says if you see your mushrooms on a permanent event card, and it is exactly that. Can you see how like it's exactly that? All right. So. When we eat the mushrooms, we just draw a 221 card, draw the draw 221 and see what we get. So should we do that first? I guess we should, or should we? Maybe we should do this first. And
All right, let's draw two cards and try to succeed at this. Okay, well, we just barely got lucky. We got our one success. We don't get to keep these. Cody says it gets discarded if you do it first. Okay, I don't know what that means. You got to give me more context because by the time I see a comment, I don't know what it's referring to. Okay, but I drew the cards. We succeeded at searching here or doing something. Take a 49 card. The 49 is the glimmer of hope. We're familiar with that. For unblocking cards or they add up to an upgrade. Okay. Um, if we were exhausted, we could. Each involved character may return the your exhausted card and choose one card in their discard pile and add it to their hand and then discard this. Oh, I see. And then discard this. All right. Well, we're searching for those mushrooms. I don't care what it says. Cody says it gets discarded if you do it first. Permanent event gets discarded. Okay, you're right. So technically, if we did this first, it would go away. But we knew we were doing the mushrooms. So I'm doing that mushroom. Nothing's going to stop me from eating that mushroom. All right, so we're going to just reverse the order a little bit. So the mushroom is a 221 card. This is going to be like half the time you get poisoned and half the time you get some cards. Okay, so there's three of them. Take one at random. If we had more cards, we'd get to choose. You inspect the mushroom carefully before tearing off a piece and putting it in your mouth. Munch, munch. Its dense flesh had a, has a woody, slightly earthy flavor, a treat. By the third bite, you are overcome by a deep serenity. Take a 152 card, and then you may choose up to three cards in your discard and shuffle them back into your action deck. All right, so we didn't get poisoned. That's nice. Okay, there's a 152 card. You are confident. Okay, now it's a blessing, which means we're going to have to fix that despondent discouragement card. Otherwise, we'll lose this right away. All right, so, and now we get to take three cards in this card and shuffle them back in. So let's just take some successes. One, maybe one, two, three. Okay. All right, so we've done that. Then this goes in the pass. Okay, and then we're returning to this. One card in the discard and add it to their hand. Oh, I should have looked at those more carefully then. I mean, stealth is pretty good. Oh, but we're at max hand size. Well, let's just take stealth over sneak attack since it's good at doing other things. Okay. And then this has to get discarded. Okay. And then. This gets, oh, whoops. Then this gets discarded. Okay. Well, uh, there's no point doing this anymore. There's no more cards for that. So, <clears throat> boy, we're slow going today, huh? We could dig up the super artifact. First, in case we need the blessing to deal with that before resolving the card that makes us discard blessings while walking. Sure. 
here we go. This is where we got something amazing or we got screwed. So, with the unveilers, we can choose to interact with them. And here's how it goes. We can scare them away and just take a $3.99 or dig them up and get something more valuable. What is the $3.99? Have we ever done that? Is that like a guaranteed okay thing or could it be bad too? But we want to risk it, huh? Even if it's bad, it's interesting, says Jonathan. All right, well, we do have some stuff that's Oh, we don't have to succeed. Is there anything that lets us draw less cards for digging? That would be nice. No, there isn't. So we still have to draw our three cards. Too bad. All right, let's draw our three cards. We should look for something that lets us not pay so much for things. Okay, three cards, doesn't matter what they are, they get discarded, and now we take a 400, and we could get into a lot of trouble here. There is a golden 400, so if we can make our way through all of these unveiler cards, we get some ultra item. All right, last time we did this, we got this horrible ring or something. Is that how we got the ring? We got something terrible. Here we go. You've been digging for quite a while when you hit something. It's the mirror of the soul. And it, you reveal a mirror that seems to be impregnated with an arcane energy. Immediately after this is revealed, read 455. Oh, it's a side quest. Whoa, every time we, look at this, every time you use it, you check a box in the mirror of the soul. It's barter item, it's fragile. Every time you use it for magic, look, it's got a little eyeball at the bottom. Every time you use it, you, <laughs> you check it off. All right, so let's, let's. Let's read 455 about the mirror of the soul. And then this guy disappears. Okay. Here we go. Mirror of the soul. Muffled noises emanate from the mirror, becoming clearer and clearer as you listen. A voice emerges from the unfathomable depths. You almost expect it to offer you three wishes. Look at you, poor mortal. Do you even know what I am? I belong to the most powerful darkenest this land has ever borne. You who have found me, draw from me as much as you like, but try not to break me. Write down Mirror of the Soul 455 on the side quest pages. I would rather not break this thing. Okay, so we've got our third side quest, Mirror of the Soul made by some dark wizard, 455. Okay. So how does this work? If you use it seven times, sorry. So it just, has a place to mark how many times you use it, but it doesn't tell you what to do when you complete it. But what does this say to do? When three boxes have been checked. Okay, so if we use it three times, then 
it's going to be very unhappy with us. So we use it twice and throw it away. Use it twice and then we'll barter it away. What do you think about that? Thankfully, it doesn't weigh anything and it doesn't have a lock on it, so we can give it away. All right, so we'll use it twice, then we'll give it away to someone. All right, well, unless you see a bird on this place, we got to go this way. All right, let's look over here then. I guess we need to take a break. Well, this is a great card from us because we have lots of cards that use these to power up. In fact, look at this one. We can get two successes. Two successes. Two ways to get two successes. Pretty amazing. Ah, okay. So before we walk anywhere, we're going to have to get rid of... We want this. So we have to get rid of this card. So the, let's get rid of this card, then we'll take a break. This card says, if you ever walk, you got to lose all your blessings. So we're going to throw away a Hope Reborn, which is an upgrade. We would love to keep this, but we can't afford it. We need to get rid of this card. We need our blessings. So I'm throwing away the Hope Reborn. Sorry, it says block. I'm blocking our Hope Reborn. And returning this discouragement 129 that was kind of sucky but okay all right all right well now we can move about all right let's flip let's take a break and then we'll start going this way All right, I'll see you in eight minutes.
Okay, we're back. I've 3D printed the extra space for our fifth card. Here we are. Let's clean up a little bit. Oh, I've put all the items with weight over here. So we're still at 10. We can't carry any other weight, but we're okay otherwise. <clears throat> okay. What's next? Find those birds, says Jonathan. Has any been has anyone else been watching Shogun, the miniseries Shogun? It is really quite amazing. There was a little bit of crying while watching it today. Episode eight we watched. Couple tears were shed. This is a, this is one of the best miniseries I've ever seen. The original Shogun was quite a cultural uh, event as well. This one is so well acted. The acting here, it's probably some of the best acting I've ever seen on TV. I mean, it's really subtle and really good. I can't recommend it more highly, but you really got to pay attention to it. This is not the show you watch on, you put on in the background. This is the movie you completely put your focus on. Has anyone else been watching it in the channel? You can leave it in the comments if you watch this video after the fact. Can you imagine, imagine this video being watched in 20 years? And people say, what is this Shogun thing? And then they go back and watch it and watch Shogun. All right, here we are. We're going to open this up. It's a level two, but it's still free with a ground shiver of three. We need to find those birds. Here we go. I see more red berries, but we don't have anything for red berries. Okay. So it's an event that attaches to everything around it. You are lost. Luckily, one tree dominates the others, and you should be able to find your way from its high branches. So we can climb two cards. Three successes, that's reasonable, with some help. Otherwise, if we fail, we hit the ground and get injured. That's what that three is going to be. If we have a compass, then it's an auto success, but we could get unlucky and lose some cards. Unfortunately, we don't have that. We don't have the compass. Not even our arcanist has the compass. That's really a shame. Um, we can use this to get ourselves some symbols, but it's a climb. We don't have anything for a climb. This is pretty nasty. I don't want to get injured. I really don't. However, we can generate one success from this, and it's also a chain. Blessing temporary. Yes. I think it's time to... That's how we'll solve this. Okay, so here's what we'll do. We'll draw enough cards that we have a reasonable chance at getting this on our own. If we have to, we'll use this. We can't use any of our other stuff in our hand because they're all for skills. Whoops, where's my hand view? You gotta admit this hand view is not so bad. Okay, so none of our hand is good at that skill. So that's not going to help us. That's not going to help us. That's not going to help us.
and none of our items are good at climbing. So I'm afraid we're either going to have to face this on our own with two cards. We could get three successes on our own. And we get to keep one, which would mean we get to keep two. So it's an incentive to draw extra cards. If we draw four cards, we got a reasonable shot of getting successes. Five cards, a little better. Three successes, two cards. We'd rather not have to bump that. So I think we draw five cards. It's quite a few cards, but it helps that we're on easy mode. Oh, Jonathan is right. Hold on. Let's let's pause for a second. Jonathan says, can we not try the luck even if we want to? You're right. You are right. We could simply try our luck. The worst case, we'd lose three cards. You've got a good point there. We're going to draw five cards. Better to just draw three. And if we're jinxed, we just lost three. Okay, you're quite right. You are quite right. All right, so it would be even better if we had a card that let us not we need to pick up some cards that let us not draw cards for random actions. Okay, Jonathan had an idea. He said, why are you worried about whether you have a weapon, a card that uses this? Who cares? Just do this action. Try to look around. All right, so we're drawing one card. We just throw it out. Then we take a 13. Don't forget, some of one of these 13s is evil. But it's a 1 in 6 chance. Is that right? 1 in 6? I thought it was 1 in 7. Oh, did we already get the unlucky one? No. Because when you get the unlucky one, it goes away. Uh, okay, so if we get the terrible one, I'm not going to be... I'm going to blame Jonathan. Otherwise, worst case scenario, we lose three cards. That's really not bad. Okay. Here we go. I really want to invent our custom building that lets you not get terrible jinx. Okay, let's do it again. Lady Luck is on your side. So no, nothing went wrong. Jonathan saved us a whole bunch of cards. I don't have to say this like four health. Okay. Oh, actually, if I had looked at this, I might have thought twice. It's only if we got lucky that we throw this away. If we got unlucky, we would have lost three cards and still had to face this. That's not as good as I thought. That's kind of risky. 50% chance that you just wasted a card. Four cards. That's pretty. Ri that's pretty risky. I think I would have gone for this if I had paid attention to the fact that only discard this if you get lucky, because when you when you add in the possibility of getting that evil card with the fact that if you drew fifty percent chance unlucky, you would lose. You would have lost four cards. That's pretty bad. Okay. Um, so we got lucky. <laughs> it's the best way to say it. All right. Then this gets discarded into the past. And out comes the 84 card. Come on, birds. Where are those birds? Where are the birds? I see a bird. I see a bird. I see a bird. I see a bird. A cute little bird. Okay, a big beak bird. In fact, we got lots of flora around here. Anything else of interest to us? Still haven't seen our dinosaur plant. 
All right, let's figure out how to do this. So we take our card, we attach it. Okay. We didn't need to use this. Um, okay. So there's the bird. We've got other things we can do. Let me bring out these. I do want to point out some a weird thing here. Um, the rules talk about this. But I do want to mention it because I don't remember this ever happening in Seventh Continent. You see how this card has the Fog of War exploration tokens that are level twos. But notice this one had a level one over here. So this came out first. So this became a one. If this had come out first, we had gone this way, this would have been a two. It's kind of odd. I'm not sure why they did that. I mean, they have to know that this attaches to this. So I'm not sure why that is, but okay, it doesn't matter. Now, we're on this space here. All right, so how do we talk to a woman about a bird? You take this action unless a big beak bird can be seen on your terrain card. Okay, so we got to walk over there. That just takes us one action. But we get to keep it. Okay, do we want this card? Do we want this card? It generates a random symbol. I mean, these are all pretty good, but it feels like we've got a bunch of fighting, maybe an overkill on fighting. Maybe this is better than the Arcane Shock because it could combo with these, and we already have Enchanted Projectile. I'm thinking we bring this one back. Since we have other cards with fight and other cards that use these symbols. And this has success and a thing which is going to get shuffled back in soon. So let's do that. Okay, so we walked over here. Now we're going to talk to this woman. We're all on the same terrain. We do see a big beak bird. We do a zero zero test. And we read the dialogue of the terrain card. So here's a. There may be a way to see the number on this card. This card, but you know that this is the 84. You might remember it, but it's not shown on this card. But we know this told us to bring out the 84. So there's the 84. So we're supposed to look up. How do we do it? The dialogue of the terrain. Okay, so we're looking up dialogue 84. So the bird is going to tell us where to go. She's going to listen to the bird. FM signals you to stop and whispers, did you hear something? A whistle? If you answered yes, Read 37. If you answered no, read 53. What the? I mean, is this a trick question? First of all, I thought she was the only one who could hear the birds. Let me see what it says again. See if this is a trick question. Only she can recognize the whistle. Did you hear something? A whistle? I mean... Did we? 
Is this a trick question? What's going on here? Jonathan, you're good at Our input doesn't matter. Just say no. Okay, Jonathan says we say no. 53. What the? I didn't hear anything either, FM says. After a long and silent walk, she tells you to stop. What the? What kind of nonsense is this? <laughs> FM smiles. You wonder why? Then you hear the melodious whistle. Moving branches aside, you discover a colorful bird at the center of a clearing. What was the... I wonder what that's about. Okay. Moving branches aside, you discover a colorful bird at the center of a clearing, digging into the earth with its long beak and pulling out marsh bugs. As you approach the nest to dig it out, FM seizes you by the arm. Not another step. Vibrations. You wait, watching closely. What a shame. Crystal, Tords, at least four of them. They love these insects and they're very aggressive. Their crystalline skin, as sharp as it is resistance, makes them dangerous beasts. Better to give up and try our luck elsewhere. We need this fertilizer. I'd rather take my chances. That's your choice. Do you have a musical instrument with you? Is this really a good time for a tune? Tords cannot stand certain sounds, but if you prefer to face them, that's up to you. If you prefer to avoid confrontation and continue your search for marsh bug nests elsewhere, return to the dialogue book. If you prefer to fight the crystal toads, take a 171. If you win the fight, all you have to do is dig up the nest. Take a 101 and return the dialogue book. Otherwise, return the dialogue book. You prefer to play music, one character may take the following action only if they have a card with the keyword music. At some point, we used to have a flute and stuff, but we don't anymore. That's too bad. That's too bad. Well, we do have the axe. Boy, are we going to really use it on some toads? I guess we're going to, right? Because we can't. We got to fight and get our things. Okay, we're going to fight them. Take a 171. I, I'm not thrilled about this. But we got to do what we got to do. We need that fertilizer, I guess. <sighs> I wish we had some. Well. Can we come back here if we get a flute? All right, we're fighting them. Here we go. If you're going to fight, take a 171. If you win the fight, take a 101. All right, I'm just going to write down so we don't, so I can close this book. All right, here we go. We're fighting some toads. Mm, what was this? Uh, you know, she could have brought a flute with her. She's blind. She probably likes music and sound. She knows all about these creatures liking sound. Why doesn't she have a flute in her pocket? The crystal torts stare at you with their bulging eyes as they croak razor sharp. The bluish ridges of their crystalline skin glisten in the sun. At your first movement, they pounce. I would have liked to fix up this uh, armor first. But apparently not. After each consequence step of the following action, you may flee combat. If you do, 
spend five cards and return this. All right, so we're allowed to flee it, but we are going to get some reward at the end. Now they're evasive. What does that mean? Is that the first time we face an evasive creature? Evasive. During each draw step, for every three cards you draw, lose. For every three cards you draw, lose some. Okay, so they're evasive three. For every three cards we draw, we have to throw away three more cards. That's a weird rule. For every three cards, so do we round up or down or what? This is, these guys are going to be kind of exhausting to fight. All right, let's assume that there's no rounding, so it's only on multiples of three that we have to draw three. For every three cards you draw, lose X cards based on their evasiveness. So every three cards we draw, we're going to lose three cards. Okay. What? Sometimes it gets confused by that green. Okay. So let's see. If we only draw two cards at a time and just whittle away, we're taking serious wounds. We don't want that. But it is fight. We've got lots of strong stuff for that. So we can use this. Uh, are we on the hand cam? That's the better camera to be on. Okay. So here we are fighting the toads. All right. So we can use, we've got some strong things. We could use our axe if we wanted to. We have to fight now. We've got weapons. Two wounds if we fail, no wounds if we don't fail, though. So our hoe is a weapon, could be used to give us a star. Could block wounds if we draw. This is an interesting strategy. Another strategy would be to keep equipping our armor, draw two cards. Mm, I guess we'd have a hard time blocking them. What about weapon blade? I think this is overkill for these guys, isn't it? Yeah, if we can kill them a different way, let's do it. All right, let's say we draw two cards and get a success from this one. Then we only need two successes and we wouldn't have to discard any. And then we could actually get a guaranteed success from this. Like if we drew two cards, Three, four, two, three, get two successes. Then we could use this. I'm tempted to just draw two cards and see if we can't use, because we're already maxed out our hand.
rather than draw three and lose three, six. Let's try it. Let's try it for the fun of it. I'm going to draw two cards so that we don't have to do their evasive ability. Let's see what happens. All right, so we've drawn two cards. We've gotten one success, but three wild card symbols. Okay, so I didn't choose what weapon to use, but we're not going we're going to pretend I didn't choose one, I guess. Because that's kind of important. You were supposed to do this first. If I had chosen this, I did put it up here then we would be done. Um, but we're going to punish me and say that I didn't choose this. And instead, we'll just use telekinesis to do no that doesn't have a fight icon on it okay so we'll use this to generate two more so one two three so we need one more success. And we have one symbol left. And we could use, use that, that would be overkill though. All right, let's use this because we're going to use our um, lose our blessings eventually anyway. Okay. I see. I should have used this. Actually, it's a purse, so this would have had to be chosen ahead of time. All right, well, I'm going to punish myself for not choosing these ahead of time by not letting myself use them. But then we'll have to use stealth. It's overkill, but it is enough to do it. So one success on these two cards. Then two successes here. But we don't have to get rid of this. We're just going to throw away a card instead. Can you see that? That that one doesn't require you to... You can either block it or discard it. So that's pretty great. And then we have to also use this to generate an additional success. So that gets us our one, two, three, four successes. That's pretty expensive, but John says the cards are a bit cut off. Yes, sorry about that. I'll try to do that better. But okay, hopefully you saw that we did generate four successes here, and we only drew two cards so that we didn't have to pay the evasive cost. That rule about evasive is a little ambiguous, so I'm just going to assume we got that right. Okay, so when we drop down to here, now we can draw two or more to get three successes. This seems like we should be able to pull this off on our own without using any purse items. If we have to, well, can we use, let's use our can we use our armor this time to try to block that? Okay, so we're going to use our 
Why is it doing its thing? Is it, you know what it is? It's because sometimes when the green screen reveals too much, too little sliver, it looks like a thing. Okay, so we're going to try to use our armor so we don't take this wound. So this is being used. There has to be some way I'll tap it. Okay, this is being used. Purses have to be equipped ahead of time. Um, and with two cards, we should be able to get three successes. So I'm going to draw one, two. Now I think I have to draw more than. No, let's use this. So this is going to get us a success. And then I'm only going to draw two cards again. If I get two successes, we're home free. If I don't get two successes, I'll trigger this. Mm, we could fail it. But if we fail it, we get three wounds. What about our, what about our weapon? Why am I trying so hard to avoid drawing three cards? That's what we'll do. We'll use the... Oh, is a very good weapon. Oh my god, what's this five thing? Five, but we can draw as many cards as we want. Um, just trying so hard to avoid drawing cards. Maybe that's not the right thing to do. Discard, discard. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm not going to use the confident thing. Instead, we're going to use the sword to let me draw more cards. Now we can use three cards to get three successes. And then if we need to, ah, so I might as well draw four cards, five cards. Sorry about that. This is just how it goes when you're with me playing these games. Okay, I'm going to, I need to refresh my cards. So one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven. Is that this card? It should be random. Okay, so seven health we just lost, which puts us down to thirty seven. Okay. So I think I'm going to draw more than I need three successes. If I draw five cards, I'm surely going to be able to do this. And hopefully we'll have enough shields to block this wound. 
And I don't think we'll need this, but we might. Okay, here we go. So there's our three. We didn't even need to use three cards. We killed it a little bit overkill. However, these get discarded and three more cards get discarded because that's the evasive ability. Pretty nasty. And we take a wound. Oh, but where's my... So I did get enough to use the armor. So we blocked that wound, but we used both of these, even though we didn't need this. So let's roll for the armor to see if it got destroyed. Yes, I just destroyed our armor. Okay, and now for the Gladius. That's a four, so that's okay. Okay, return this. So we just lost our armor. We used it once, but it did help us. All right. Well, the armor weighed something, so we were going to have to drop it eventually anyway. Uh, okay, and now we're down here. I do, I mean, I'm not going to apologize for this dragging out when we fight. That's just, there's no way to avoid it. That's why these games, we generally am not, this is not the kind of game we play on the channel, but that's okay. This is what we're doing. Okay, now. This is interesting because the punishment for failing is not so bad. And we could take our time here. So we could whittle away at this each time we take a wound. Now a wound, and we don't have our armor anymore. So we're probably not going to kill it on one shot. Sure would be nice if we didn't lose that armor there. But the more we can kill him, the better. Five, huh? Is it time to use our, our thing? I don't think so. I don't think it's time to use our super weapon. And the reason for that is that... Where is our super weapon? The reason why it's not time to use our super weapon, even though we do have to do five damage, is that the consequences for taking a couple shots at this are not so bad. And we can use as, oh, we can use as many cards as we want here. So, I don't think we even use our Gladius. Let's not let it break. Let's just draw five cards. Five cards. We'll have to pay an extra three because of evasive, but it's very likely we'll be able to kill it in one shot, especially with this. We'll almost certainly be able to kill it in one shot. All right, let's do it. So we're not using any weapons. We're just going, drawing as many cards as we want. We're drawing more than three, so we have to pay for it. Okay, here we go. Okay, we're looking for five successes. Well, it took all of our cards to get five successes. One, two, three, four, five. We didn't have to use any of our hand. Although look at all those symbols we got. We have anything that heals us up. But we don't. Okay, but we succeeded in one shot. 
Now, we do have to lose three cards because of their evasive. Every three cards you draw, you lose three. Okay, so there's three cards for evasive. All of these five cards go away. Ouch, that was a lot of energy, but we did kill it. We still take a wound down to 36. And a 151 card, which is going to be an objective, right? No. 151 card. I guess the objective is separate from that. Okay, so look what we won as our victory. We can... We've seen this before. We can trigger three fists. That's pretty nice. Although we've seen you can lose your blessings without very quickly. We have to remember that the purse has to be equipped ahead of time. I'm not sure we were doing that all the time with our other purses. You must equip your purse items before the battle, before you reveal. So just help me remember that. Okay, luckily it doesn't weigh anything. All right, and then the rule was, if we succeed, we take a 101. That's an objective. All right, so we got our first objective of this scenario. What was the rule for this scenario? It said... You need at least three objective cards. So we needed that. That's that. Then we did the right thing, right? John says, maybe we should be taking back some of these animals we're killing for provisions. I guess none of them are edible. Yeah. All right. So we could unblock. Let's take a look at this card that's all blocked up because we do now have the ability to unblock it if we wanted to. So we frequently have extra. We frequently have extra symbols. Where is our thread? Spool of thread. For one action and success, unblock a card with clothing or fabric. I think we should try this while we're while we have time here. Because this is a pretty useful card, given that we're uh given that we have a lot of those symbols and could take wounds. So I think we should do this. Let's draw two cards. If we fail, oh, you discard it, even if you fail. Okay, well, here we go. We got our successes. Don't get to keep any, that's unfortunate. So we lost our spool of thread. This card's into the past, but we did bring our cape back out, which is useful for defense. I wish it was barter as well. All right. All right, those toads were difficult, but we did the right thing. Now, that was the bird. We're still here. We need three birds. Yikes. All right, well, the moment we get our three birds, we're headed home. All right, let's see. So what would you like to do now? We can look over here. Looks like there's sheep. We could be able to catch a sheep. Or we could look down here. Surely we should look at the sheep while we're here, don't you think, Jonathan? We have to draw two cards. Look at these toads. Razor toads. Evasive, that was tricky. That was that did some real damage. All right, but we got rid of the toad. We killed them. 
Uh, all right, so let's look in there. Having not heard anything from Jonathan, I'm just going to do it. Two cards. We don't get to keep any. We don't have any way of making that less. We need to find some cards that reduce our action cost when it's not important. There's a lot of cards that tell you to draw cards, but don't have any, you don't need to get any victories. So if we could figure out ways to avoid that. Okay, here's our 261. A dozen or so sheep are scattered about grazing. These ruminating animals have found something here to satisfy their insatiable appetites. If only you could take them back to the citadel. The timid creatures flee as you try to approach. If you have a card with the keyword animal or a sack of grain, boy, it keeps asking us for a sack of grain. How are we going to find that? So we can just try this. This is what we get to do if we have an animal or a sack of grain, which we don't. But if we can pull this off, We can get a 270. So now, how are we going to pull that off? It's a present action. We don't have to do this, so let's think about it. So we have no card in hand that can help, but we can, ge except for generating symbol. Now. We can generate more symbols. Lots more symbols of those. That doesn't help us. That's for fighting, but this would generate an instant success. We have to trigger it, whether it's useful or not, but and and that would let us draw use three cards. So, if we use the confidence to grab a sheep, hey, look at this. We should remember we can use this to re-roll a die. Okay, this woman is still not helping us. All right, so if we use this now, we get a success or use an extra card. So we'd have to get, that's going to be difficult to pull this off. It's going to be difficult, but in two cards, if we drew, if we drew enough, we could do, pull this off. I kind of want the cheap. I don't know what a sheep will be able to do. We could pull this off, though. If we draw enough cards, if we drew five cards, we would be able to get three successes on two cards. For each success you are short by, lose two. If you have a sack of grain, you don't even have to spend it. I don't know, Jonathan, what do you think? If we draw five cards, I feel like we could get this. Five cards is like a point and a half of health, two points of health. Let's do it. Jonathan also says, let's do it at the same time I did. Okay, so there's three, but we have to refresh our health again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we got full cards back. We're using our confidence before 
We've had last game we lost a lot of those blessings went away, so I like the idea of using them. Okay, so three, four, five. I feel like with five cards, we need to get lucky, but not too lucky. Okay, so seven brings us to 29. We're actually kind of at risk here. All right, so nothing to do but. Get so we're using this. Where do we put this to say we're using it right here? Okay, we're using this now. We need to get three six, we need to get three successes on two cards or four on three cards. All right, we need to get three successes on two cards. No, no, we didn't do it. Uh, we didn't do it. We almost did it, but we didn't do it. And we lost this. Oh, that's a shame. So there's one success, two, three, oh, that's too bad. Oh, that's a lot of wasted cards. I'm just trying to think if there's anything that we're overlooking. That's well, a lot of cards to waste to not get it. Maybe I didn't calculate my odds as well as I could have. All right, so we've lost our confident card. That hurt. That was brutal. Five cards. We lost those. We don't get to keep any of them. And we were short by one, so we lose two more cards. And the sheep runs away. Well, now you know. Now you know, don't try to chase sheep unless you have grain. All right, that was painful. That was painful. Well... There's nothing more to see over there. That means Let me ask you something. There's still a bird there. Is there any reason we can't do the bird thing again? Did we, because we didn't see the whistle, did we get something different? I'm a little confused now. Can we just keep doing this at this one location? But what if we say we heard the whistle this time? Aren't you curious to see what it... I'm going to say we heard the whistle and see if we get something different. FM signals you to stop and whispers. Did you hear something? 
a whistle, and we're gonna say yes this time. This is a very weird thing. So now we say yes. Let's see what she says. She says, really? How could I not hear anything? This is the first time my hearing has failed me, she says, worried. I'll follow you. Now you're annoyed. You'll have to do the listening. During the result step of the following action, if you reveal several cards with one or more class action, class icons, the action fails. This is terrible. Because all of our cards have class actions. We are bound to fail this. This was a terrible mistake. If you reveal several cards with one or more class actions. What does several mean? More than one? Forty seven is just the toad card anyway. I don't think we can do this again. Is that let's see. 47 is the toads. All right, so we're going to ignore this. We're going to pretend we could, we're could. we only allowed to do this once. All right, never mind, lady. Your ears are fine. I didn't hear anything. All right. I guess we're going to look down here. Okay, let's flip this over. A decomposing corpse is lying in the grass. You swallow your disgust and shoo away the flies to quickly search it. Take a 13 to try your luck. Ugh, I don't like these luck cards. Next time we play, I'm building the bu I'm building the imaginary building that I've invented, which lets you do this twice. Okay, here we go. Lady Luck is on your side. It's on our, not only is it on our side, but we take a 49 card. We get a little bonus. Did we always get Glimmer of Hope when we, when Lady Luck is on our side? Okay, Glimmer of Hope. And now she's on our side, so we get a 149. There's a lot of those. These are our barter items, I guess, 149s. Okay. This stupid thing. Does it weigh anything? No, that's good. Okay, and then 13 goes back. All right, so we can eat. By uh, taking the top five, putting them back top or bottom in any order. Or if we have two jam, that's kind of fun. Let's see if we can't save up for two jams. All right. So we got the corpses have good stuff when we go to them. Okay, 197 comes out. And. We need more birds. One ninety seven says numerous tombstones overlook the mire. Strange to find them so far from civilization. So we've made it to the mire. Any birds here? No, but graveyard, and it's hard to walk here. All right. Well, I'm a little afraid we're gonna end up running low on health because of those bad mistakes I made. Okay. Now, what do we want to do here? I mean, there's nothing to do but walk over here. So let's walk over here, draw one and keep it. On the double, this lets us run away. So, sorry, 
This lets us run away. This might be a nice card to keep until we need to get home. Because we could use this card to go and save ourselves one, two, three, well, four cards. Three cards. So maybe we should hold on to this card as long as we can for our final escape because we're down to 29 health. I guess we still have more than half our health. We're okay. All right. Well, now that we're on our card, we're entering some scary territory, though. We're in the four zones. Four zones cost seven to walk through. They cost seven, Jonathan. Jonathan says, we gotta find the birds. Don't forget, we might just find birds. It's possible we would find birds uh, by looking. Probably not. So Jonathan's like, graveyard? Eh, don't mess with it. If you could... If we can find our special dinosaur plant, then maybe we're in good shape. I don't see anything here. These graves look dangerous, but it's free, Jonathan. Don't you want to get the free stuff? Or will a ghost come out of here? All right, Jonathan says, we're looking for birds. So we just got to look for birds, but boy, that's a very expensive bird hunt. Is it possible there are birds up there somewhere? Because we're in a territory that we're not good at. All right, well, let's look down here then. Jonathan now wants to look at the graves. Let's look at a bird and then a grave and then a bird. I mean, uh, explore. Grave. All right, let's look at this. This costs us seven cards. That's terrible. That's a very expensive. Okay. It's a waterway. If your figure's base is not in contact with a waterway, discard this. Otherwise, the crumbly bank yields. And during the following action, the active player is whoever revealed this, and no other characters may get involved. You have to do a balance test. If you avoid the water, you go to 150. Otherwise, you're getting injured and return all your blessings or inks. Okay, so look at this weird thing. Uh, it asks if... It asks if we're actually standing on a waterway. But we're not. We're standing right here not on this waterway. So discard this. Okay. Uh, 137. There better be a bird on this card. The part of the mire to the south of the crossing river seems to have been dried out by the burrower's holes. Hey, Jonathan was right. There's lots of birds hanging out by this mire. I have noticed that these birds are not so easy to catch, though. And look at this thing. And what's this thing? So we got like a... Eiffel Tower that's fallen over, a hole that you can't look at, when you can, wait a minute, what's this? You have to go here? I think it, that's interesting, I don't remember seeing this thing before, so I think what it means is the moment we walk on here, we got to go there. Uh, you know, 
we may need to use these Hope Reborns instead of upgrades for life. If we need to. No, if we need to, we can get more life. All right, Jonathan, what's it going to be? We could look at the graveyard. We could walk over here. It's expensive to walk here and back. So probably we should do everything we want to do on this card before we have to come back. So we're going to look at the graves here. I'm not going to draw any cards. 177. I don't know. If, I don't have a great feeling about this. Okay. You stroll through the cemetery. Da, 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 da. Surprised to discover it's relatively well preserved. It's rare to find them untouched by the necro druids henchmen who used to steal corpses from graves, enabling their master to shape their monstrosities. You notice a curious detail. The same family name is engraved on many of the headstones. A voice startles you. A man about 40 cycles old merges suddenly from among the gravestone. He does not look well. Got a shovel, though. All right. Well, we don't have to do this, but surely we're all about adventure. I wonder if our kid is getting tired of adventure at this point. He's like, guys, I know I said I wanted to go on adventures, but maybe not quite so many. All right. We are doing this. 275. Um, let's take our break first. We've been playing for four hours. This is such an epic game. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk to this grave digger and see what's going on. I'll see you in eight minutes.
Okay, we're back. YouTube says seven concurrent viewers, seven likes. For what that's worth. I'm putting out some more exploration cards. So we can see what a six exploration costs us. I'm not sure we've ever been to a six. Maybe we did when we went to the city. Oh my god, look at how much it costs to, to explore into there. Ten. That's insane. It's very expensive to go over here. I get the feeling we're not meant to be here. Like, I think maybe we're not meant to cross this river. Um... Well, let's deal with the graveyard guy. I just hope he doesn't hit us in the head with the hammer and knock us into the water. We absolutely need to get this bird, but I wonder if we can't get the bird this way. I did want to try something out here. Let me see if this works. I put the screenshots from our previous playthrough up. I want to see if I can bring them up here. Let's see. Uh, okay, let's see if this works. All right, so here was our last playthrough. So I guess what I'm asking here is if we see any birds. And then I can move my way through this if this works. Hey, look, this works. That was our city. That was inside the city. This was the path home. So I don't see any birds over here. Well, that's not a bad feature, huh? 
So remind me before we before we clear this board to take some pictures of our map here so that we can remember it. You got to admit there are some fun things that we do here on this channel in terms of cameras and stuff. I was thinking I could with the chat tool I wrote have it so you could control the cameras in the chat if we thought that would be fun to try okay um let's talk to this graveyard guy before we leave here because we're not going to come back if we can help it zero zero two seven five here we go Is he going to give us a mission? Let's see what he says. Have you come here to visit a lost, lost one? No, no, don't be afraid. I'm Gyron, the keeper of these graves. I wager you weren't expecting to find a cemetery in such a remote place. Burial is an old custom almost forgotten today, except for nobles like us who still practice it. Restoring this very old and forgotten cemetery cost my grandfather a lot of work and tears. Yes, many tears. It was no easy task to transport the bodies of our family decimated when the burrowers caused the ground to swallow Valengard. Grandfather told me many stories about that time that will stay with me forever. And as he and my father are buried here, I will maintain the family necropolis to keep it safe from the necro-druids and their cursed plants. If both your influence and defense score are 10 or higher, read 240. Otherwise, close the dialogue book. Okay, so we need to... They're definitely not. So in our future... Come back to, we need 10 or higher influence and defense. So come back to this card, 197 event, when influence and Defense bigger than ten. We have to rem we have to remember that because the game doesn't have any way built in to tell us to remember that. So we need to add this to our dock, and we need to make sure we take a picture so that we remember. So how about we have a system? where we put a little marker on a card when we take a photo to remind us that that's the card that's the focus of this photo and can we bring this down a little bit so that it's all in our screenshot okay so All right, so I've saved the screen, hopefully. So we'll remember how to get back to that place. So the nice thing is if we ever, when we have that value, 10 and 10, we can just rush right down to this guy and see what he's all about. But otherwise he didn't help us. All right, so Jonathan, I think we should look over here because we know we need more birds. And then maybe if there's a bird here, we don't want to have to come back up. So I think we got to go here. Okay, here we go. Our ground shiver is not five or higher, so it costs us seven cards. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven. Wow, this is going to eat up. We might have to use our upgrades here for health. Okay, let's see what we got. Been raining heavily, and you have spent the day wading through icy water. If you are playing scenario, which we are, what's it called? Get fed or die trying. Read 386. Okay, so we've got a special thing to read. 386. Okay, so we're in our mission area, which is kind of cool. All right, 386. All right. Let's see what we got here. Oh boy. I don't feel well. I think I'm going to a jar carrier collapses at your feet. We can try to heal him. Or if we had an item with the code name cure, we can just get an instant success. Two and four is impossible for us to get. And we don't have a good any healing action. So we're gonna fail this. Uh if we succeeded, we'd get a 49, which is just a little bit of barter. Unfortunately. <gasps> If we fail it, we lose an objective card. What? Take a 129? That's ridiculous. They can't take away an objective card. John says, look to the east. I don't know what that means, but this is terrible. Is there any chance we have cure card? Quest, trinket, barter, provisions, companion, weapon, blessings. We got everything but cures. We don't have a way to succeed here. It's a mandatory, so we can't even do anything before we do this. But we have no ability to... Can't believe all the stuff we have. We don't have a cure or anything to do. It was so hard to get that. Well, I guess we could go fight the toads again. Oh, that's ridiculous. Does the potion have the cure? Nope. Just as barter and fragile. We, we don't even have, we don't even have two cards in our deck that could get four victory. So you're saying if we didn't have an objective card, nothing would happen to us. But because we have one... It's kind of ridiculous, to be honest. The idea that if you didn't have one by now, 
then it would do no bad thing to you. But the fact that we have one means we're going to lose one of the hardest things we fought for. Where is that card? And we're about to get even more injured. Seems really unfair. Seems really unfair. Where's my errata printout? Is there anything in the errata about this? Just doesn't seem fair. I know there's lots of randomness, but it's bizarre that it's bizarre that if you didn't have the bird, I don't know what to tell you. All right, well, um, I guess that's it. We still have to draw two cards. All right, no, this feels like bullshit to me. So we got two successes, but we needed four. So we failed. So this guy, we leave the guy with the fever. We take one of our objective cards and we get rid of it. And we take a 129, which is gonna mean we get sick. All right, well, we have to experience these things because otherwise we can't complain about the game properly. All right, well, that that just feels unpleasant. Un, you know, um, well, let, let's just take one quick moment to talk about this. There's lots of, what's a better way to say it? Perhaps the single most interesting, profound, understood concept in board game design is loss aversion. That players do not like when things are taken away from them. And that as a game designer, you avoid that. There's lots of ways you can punish, you can hurt, you can make something hard, but you don't give things and then take them away. It feels completely unpleasant. And there are ways to get the same game effect without making people feel bitter and unpleasant and like they don't want to play again. And this is a perfect example of the idea that should have been cut off at the knees and the editor should say, find a different way to do it. Especially something so swingy that if you didn't have this yet, you wouldn't get punished. Bizarre, bizarre choice. But you know, these are the French designers of Seventh Citadel, Seventh Continent. They play by different rules. And sometimes the effect is amazing and wondrous. And sometimes it just feels like you should know better than to design the game like this. All right, so here we've got this again. In addition to that major loss, we've got this. And if we take a single step, we're going to lose our blessing.
unless we get rid of yet another Hope Reborn. We do have two of them, but not only are they upgrades, but they're the 10 life points that we need. So I'm inclined to just throw away the blessings and not spend a Hope Reborn for this. Like, we cannot afford to spend our Hope Reborn. We may very well need those life points. Jonathan says, That card is very accurate. I do feel discouraged. Yeah, me too. I do not feel... Maybe this mission you're meant to die. Does they get better? Die trying. All right, I think we got to keep this and not spend our Hope Reborn. I think we need that life. Hmm. That really feels unfair. Ninety-six come. Oh, yeah, it feels unfair, unpleasant, swingy, random. Doesn't feel like that was a good decision. All right, let's bring this card out in its place, though. This is where the Great River, where the Crossing River leaves the Great Sea to join the Black Ocean much further west. At the edge of the swamp, the chimney of a rickety shack belches out smoke. Ah, uh, well, there's a bird there, at least. At least we know the birds are here. We could still make it. We might still make it. Although, if we have to fight more animals to get these birds, it's not going to be good for us. All right. Well, we've got more birds. Bird here, bird here. Maybe if we're lucky, a bird here. We're going to have to go and get this bird. We're going to have to go and get this bird. So we might as well go here. I guess it doesn't really matter which way we go. But I feel like, well, it's, it's actually easier to, oh, this one we have to do this action. I don't know what's going to happen. So maybe let's go here. But this involves crossing over the river. Jonathan, what do you think? I guess it's smarter to go here because we don't know what this is going to do. So let's go get this bird first. All right, so we're going to walk over here, cross the river. Unfortunately, that's going to cost us three cards. We get to keep two, but we have to get them back now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I'll round up eight. Let's go to the one with the shack. Maybe we can recover there. Okay. So that's eight cards, eight points worth of health. Now we're down to 21, less than half. Although we can use the Hope Reborns. Maybe I shouldn't have used that Hope Reborn to fix us before. Okay, so we've moved over here. Did I pay for that? No, I didn't even pay for that yet. So three, three. Wait a second. Oh, I see. Okay, wait. Yes, mandatory modifier. 
mandatory modifier. This is a mandatory action, mandatory modifier. It's kind of weird because this, this one it seems to be telling you you must go here first. This one is not telling you you must. Okay, but anyway, normally a walk takes one. You get to keep one. Here it's plus two. So we have to draw three, but we can keep two because of our experience card. Unfortunately, I have a full hand. So let's see if any of these are useful. Okay, guaranteed success. We definitely want that one. This is going to help us escape. So maybe we get rid of this one. Keep this. Now this is interesting. We could hold on to this for a fight and get out of it. Try to get out of a fight. Should we try this? What would we give up in its place, though? This one, I guess. Or this one. I think maybe when we're at low health, this, this card we should try to use. So I'm going to keep these two. Kind of want to keep this for our escape. I want to keep this and use it soon. Strength. Feels like we need this card. Where was the... Jonathan, what was the... um? Why did we want a projectile card so badly? And here we have one. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to get rid of the evasive, evasive appearance. But remind me why we wanted a projectile card. Did we, we had some other option that wanted projectile. And now I can't remember what it was. Doesn't seem like we have it anymore. By the way, this is our magic card for strength. Look at this amazing strength card. When we need to fight strength, we can generate four successes with these symbols, which we have a lot of. So like this is exactly the kind of thing we should be looking for and holding on to. And then blocking it, unblocking it. So getting some cards that let us unblock. We can keep reusing telekinesis for strength test. That's the way to go. But what was the thing that needed projectile? That why do we not care anymore? All right. Anyway. So we've lost this card, this blessing that gave us strength. Return this. We still have this. Okay, so we're over here now. Jonathan says, let's go to the shack. We should look at the shack and the fog of war before going to the bird. Okay, so let's look. Let's look at this because we're surely going to do this because we, well, I wouldn't be surprised if he has a boat, but we're not going to get on that. But in case we do, let's not spend seven just to see what's here. But surely we just won't get on this boat. All right, let's 
let's look at this. The worst, the most important thing is if we have to redo this mission is to know what's here. So I'm going to spend seven to do this. Unless he can tell us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, maybe he gives us a bird. All right, never mind. I'm not going to do this. If this, if maybe there's a whole family of birds living in this shelter, what's the odds of that, Jonathan? This is the mother bird, and there's like a nest of 20 of them in there. All right, here we go. Stay on safe ground. Uh, we have to draw one to explore the shack 222. Everyone's been pretty friendly in this area of the woods so far. Hopefully I don't jinx us. The hut consists... What? Uh, why is it split close? Because that's not the good one. Okay. The hut consists of a single room cluttered with shelves that house pots that house pots and jars gleaming in the daylight, which filters through disjointed boards in the walls. Besides a stepladder, hundreds of small, carefully labeled drawers reach up to the ceiling where herbs and flowers are drying. You scared me half to death, exclaims an old woman. Well, come, come to my palace. Feel free to look out the window. The view is magnificent. You can see the roofs of Kel on a clear day. She's got lots of potions to heal you. That's a good thing. All right. And she permanently attaches. So we know Kel is off this way. Okay. All right. We can talk to her. 128. All right. We'd like to buy a whole bunch of birds, like a pallet of birds. Dead or alive? I guess they need to be alive because we need to find where the bugs are. Maybe she's got bugs to sell. How would that be? All right, let's see what she says here. You're probably wondering what a mad old crab like me is doing in a shack in the middle of nowhere. I followed my father. Of course, he was a druid celebrated for his talents. He hid from the world so as not to compromise himself with the dark magic of the necrodroids. Stain the sanctity of nature is a monstrosity he has always fought. In the tradition of his order, he taught me everything he knew about plants. Unfortunately, the cauldron I use to mix my potions and remedies is cracked. There are many mixtures I can no longer make without it. If you would rather resume your journey, return the dialogue book. Otherwise, it continues. I guess we're allowed to look at this, at least the test. Otherwise, do this kind of test. Two and five. Or zero, zero, if you choose to discard a cooking pot card. All right. Well, we can't do that. We do have, um, we do have cards with that forge symbol on them. I think they're the the spool of thread. Let me just look at that. The spool of thread, that's an action. That's not a modifier. Okay, so this is not something we can do. Not in a million years. So we're just going to leave. It's a little weird that it's red. It almost makes it seem like you'd have to decide before continuing reading this. And once you read on, you'd have to do it. Um, but I don't think that seems right. There's no failure here. So we can't do, we can't deal with this woman. Does she have any mushrooms that we can eat? Doesn't look like it, does it? 
She's got garlic. Any numbers you can see? John says we should do the fog of war. Oh, yeah. We should do the fog of war because if we have to do it later, it could still it could steal another objective from us. I see. Yes, you have a point there. All right. So let me uh, let me just take a quick screenshot of this. So we know where this woman is and what she wants, right? This is 222 woman wants uh, or forging plus five. All right, let me just take a screenshot. All right, so goodbye. We've got stuff to do. All right, so we're doing this for seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So expensive. Okay. Oh, nice. It's a giant monster. We had to pay seven to fight this, to reveal this monster. He's ambushed. He's unsettling. Okay, this could be the end for us. The puddle you step into suddenly comes to life like a worm made of muddy water and a blackish matter that you assume to be pure necrotic energy. It rises up in front of you and attacks. During the following action, the player is whoever revealed this, and no other characters may get involved. Now, here is the great news. We have got, we planned for this, and we brought our flight card. So we can't do it as the Reach X, but it doesn't. So, we just use this to throw a... Am I right? Is that the right symbol? Yeah, it is, right? That shows the... That is the... That is the right symbol, right? Let me just... Let me just make sure that that's the fight. Surely it is. Take a look at this more carefully. It's flight. During fight, return the card that shows the... Why has it got, like, extra squiggles on it? That's the only part that's throwing me. Is there any other card that that is? Is there any other card that that could be? Uh, I'm talking about this little symbol here. And is there any other symbol that that is other than the fight, forced fight? It's that, right? It is fight. It's just the background is making it look like squiggles. Right? Do we agree, Jonathan? That's the whole point of it. The whole reason we took it. Okay, well, that's pretty cool, though. All right, so we're facing this creature. We must fight him. He's got all this crazy stuff. Ambush. Oh. So look what it says for ambush, though. Ambush says skip the first gear up step. So, it sounds like we can't gear up. We can't take flight because of ambush. We can ambush the next turn. And un unsettling means we can't ever apply the effects of more than two cards. 
All right, so we'll be able to get out of this after the first fight, but our first fight has to kill it. If we could do four damage, we would just discard it. Otherwise, we're going to take two wounds, keep two cards, lose two cards, and then bring him down to here. Ugh, this is pretty terrible. Is flight part of gear up? Yeah, unfortunately it is. Look what it says. During the gear up step. So we're going to have to do our first fight against him. Um, but we could just beat him right here by using our... Uh, our magic weapon. We could we could use our Leviathan and do all this damage overkill to him. Um we could generate lots of symbols. So actually we can guarantee two we can guarantee two successes here with this card. But we don't have a gear up wait, we don't have a gear up step, so we can't do this. We could give ourselves two successes with this. Then we would have to get two on our own. We can't gear up, so we can't use any of our weapons. And we can't use this. We don't, we're not gearing up. We're fighting. We'd have to get, we're only allowed to use one card, so we're not going to be able to succeed. So we're not going to, oh, we can't even use the mirror. All right, well, we're going to have to just take our first hit from this guy. There's just no way around it. So this is a brutal mission. All right, so the only thing to do here is to let him attack us. Draw one card. We can't succeed in this. Ambush and unsettling. So we can't unsettling means we can only use two cards in our hand. Ambush skip the first gear up. Okay, so we're just gonna lose this. But we do get to keep two cards. Oh, okay. So I drew this card, it's one sorry, I drew this card, it's one success useless to us, but we could keep this if we wanted to. Ignore Brutal. This doesn't help us. Our other cards are better. Okay, so that's that. Now, we lost, so we lose two health. That brings us down to 19. Why is it all the way over there? Is that because of this? Okay, so that brings us down to 19. All right, what else? We get to keep two cards in our hand, but our hand is full, so that's not gonna happen. We lose two more cards. And the die, which should have been on here at four, we actually knocked it down to three with one success, but it doesn't matter because it's down here now to this. Okay, so now 
we can gear up. So I I think we should try to kill this thing. Because if we use our flight, we get we get uh, we get wounded, and I don't think we want to get wounded. And I think we can kill this guy now and get a little bit of an item. So. So if we gear up, we can use our mirror to get two, and then we just need to get two more on our own. Mirror and this gives us two. And then we draw two cards. What if we don't get a success, though? We don't want that. Uh, what about our... There, we use this too. That lets us draw three cards. Use three cards. And then what about our armor? To block these two wounds. Cape. All right, so we're going to use these items right here. Cape, Gladius, and Mirror of the Soul. Uh, and then we're going... And then if we need them, we'll do this. All right, so one, two, three, four cards because we need symbols. All right, let's try it. Can you see this? So the best we can do here with, if we use two cards, two successes, if we use two cards, we have no fists. So this guy is going to, this guy is going to be used to let us use three cards. One, two, three successes. We still need one more. We did use this, so we're going to have to use this to turn these two into two more successes. Well, that was our card we didn't use. All right, so we'll use these three things, that three cards. We didn't actually need this, but we used it, unfortunately. And we used this to block one. All right, well, we succeeded, so when we blocked one, so we're going to take one hit, which brings us down to 18. That's because we got a shroud here and a shroud here. 
We killed it. We don't keep any cards. These triggered, so now we got to check if they get destroyed. So this is for Gladius. Six, he's fine. A one or a two, we're going to block our cape. The six, that's fine. And then we've got the soul we have to mark that we've used. The mirror. All right, well, this is brutal. This is a brutal scenario, but we did beat this. And what do we get? Some bullshit, stupid normal card. In fact, there's only 149 left. We almost didn't get anything. A glimmer of hope. Good luck. Good riddance. All right. Well, that was rough. All right. But we did reveal what this is. Surely it's a bird now. Maybe I should have run away. Maybe I should have run away. But I don't want to get injured. I'd rather save that run away for someone with lots of steps. Okay, 145. We're bringing this card out now. On a promontory, fat plants covered with prickles border several paths. There's nothing natural about this vegetation. And not only that, but there's no birds. Ugh. All right. Well, now it's time to go to birds. All right. So let's do the bird on this space. And then we'll have to walk down here and do this bird. And we'll look over here, I guess. At least it's easier to walk in there. A level two. It's easier to look in there. Oops, that's a level one. Boy, this is a brutal mission, Jonathan. But a two is free for us. So that's good. Maybe we come down this way. And then we rust card. Okay, so we're going to walk down here now. So. Costs us an extra one to walk, so two to walk, but we get to keep one of these. We lose all our blessings, but we don't have any. Okay, what about this? These are both very good cards. Uh, we spent this one. So we shouldn't know if we have this, but I'm going to throw this one away so that we can keep we can actually keep both of these if we want it. So I'm going to keep improvise for sure. You know, I should have used that instead of that stupid stuff. Should have used this card instead of all those things. Strength, dodge, grab, watchful. I guess I'm going to throw this card away. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have need for these items. If we do, well, I mean, here's, no, but that's a zero, zero. I'm going to throw this away. Hope we don't need it because we're catching birds. So like catch, catch seems more useful than the others. All right. Wait, is that what we wanted to do? No, we didn't want to walk. We wanted to do the bird. 
All right. Well, um, we're going to change our mind. But uh, I paid for the walk. But we're going to do the bird first. Can I just undo that? Just going to undo it. I'm going to undo the two walk. And then I'm going to block this or pay a card. I'm going to pay a card because this is so useful. All right, bird time. Maybe we can shoot the bird down, but we don't really want to shoot down birds, do we? All right, well, we're doing the bird. So we look up this card, which is 96. This is uh, an exhausting mission. We're not getting the ballista. No, we're not. How with the community? 96. If I have to fight more toads, I'm not going to be happy. Please make the rest of these birds friendly. FM raises her hand. She's heard the song of the big beak bird. You listen carefully, but all you can hear is the wind and the leaves. You have to face facts. You would not get far without the young woman's help. You move towards a thicket, but stumble on a root and splash into a puddle, cursing. With a beat of its wings, a red shape disappears between the trees. All you have to do now is inspect the ground inch by inch to find the marsh bug next nest. If you prefer to postpone this tedious task, Return the dialogue book. Otherwise, all right. So if you have weakness, which we don't have, otherwise it's a five zero. This is ridiculous. Oh, but you can do again. Okay. All right. So let's see. What do we have to help us dig, though? Don't we have some stuff? Here's a dig that doesn't help us reduce the cost because this is an instant success. It's just time consuming. Really? We don't have our hoe or any of that stuff? What did we lose it? Oh no, we have the hoe. It just doesn't help us. Okay, just an exhausting digging. So we have to get rid of five cards. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six points of life brings us down to 12. Okay. And now we have to throw out a total of five. That's four, five. All right, we succeed, but now we have to see if we're lucky or if we have to keep digging. This systematically makes sense, but it's going to be very unpleasant if we have to keep doing that. You could easily just die right off. All right, let's see. We're due to lose one of these. All right, you're jinxed. Okay. So that was for nothing. We take a 102 card. No, we failed. So we don't get the 102. All right. So we have to do it again. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Thrown away. This is, we've talked about this with these kinds of games, that 
thematically, this makes complete sense as an experience. That's a little unpleasant if you get unlucky. All right, here we go. Lady Luck is on your side. Just return this. Okay. I really think we should consider a house rule about these 13 cards because they're the least pleasant part about this game. So I'm going to suggest for our next playthrough we consider a house rule. However, we did get an objective. One oh two, which is we lost one bird, but now we've got one back. All right, so we found a bird. I don't understand. Can we keep doing this? No, because it's always a one oh two. That's why you can't keep doing it. It's always one oh two. Each of the bird is unique objective once you get it there's nothing more to get okay now we're going to walk here for real can you please keep your eye open for numbers because that's the only way we could win this game is if we get super lucky with some numbers all right so now we're walking down here jonathan uh it takes two cards we can keep both of these if we want it. Uh, I think given our health, we may need to take this card. Second wind. Certainly are not going to take that one. But which one will we get rid of for that? All right, let's get rid of this enchanted projectile, which I paid for. And keep second wind. And sorry, can you see that? So then let's use this right now. For three extra cards. So three cards from our discard back. Not much, but every little bit helps, I guess. Okay. One, two, three cards go back, shuffled into our hand. We're going to have to use those Hope Reborns for life. Then we have a shot. Okay. Um, what about down here? Did we not, did we not face that? I guess we're, this is our first time here, so we definitely didn't face it. Okay. So there's a bird here. There's something here to look at. I suppose we should look here for free, right, Jonathan? Because if there's birds here, we don't have to go backwards. So let's look at this. But this could be a monster. But... We need more birds, so we got to do this. Okay, here we go. The potion can get us back out. Okay. Oh, dear God. A bone shrub emerges from the bushes. This corrupted shrub collects bones, which it uses as both weapons and armor. If your book score is six or higher, discard this card and read 176. If not, what is it though? It's getting close. Four. Otherwise, we have to fight it this bunch of times. However, however, now we can use our flight, maybe. It's 
tough. Tough means during each result step, ignore X successes. Oh my God. You have to ignore one of your successes. It's not that hard to kill though. Wound, wound. It's just exhausting though. Three, five, nine cards. All right, so we're going to try to fight. We're finally going to use our fight. We've been carrying this card around. So we're gearing up. We're going to try to run away. I'm going to take a 13. We get rid of this. We just get rid of it. It goes away. I love that. Especially since this has no real reward on it. All right, so we get rid of that and we use our flight. Now we have to take a 13 and we could get terribly wounded by this. If we get Jinx, if we get Jinx, then we lose three life points and take a three. So we got a 50% chance of this being pretty bad. Okay, here we go. Lady Luck is on your side. All right, we've actually gotten pretty lucky this game, but um, we're house ruling this 13 next game. Do you agree with me, Jonathan? We got to find some house rule. Okay, so... I suggest we, we make it so you can maybe trade these in so you don't have to take a luck, so you get guaranteed luck. All right, so... Return the card that shows this. Try your luck. So this doesn't even get spent. This stays in our hand, I guess. You can just keep this in your hand. That seems very weird. That seems very weird that this stays in your hand. It almost seems overpowered. In fact, you can't house rule the 13s to have no effect here. Otherwise, you would just use this for every fight. All right, well... At least it worked for us. And here comes 122. A high cliff dominates the Great Sea, which has engulfed the eastern part of the mire. Well, there is a bird there. Now, Jonathan, there are now three birds on this map. We ha can get all the birds and get home. We definitely, especially if we try trade in our Hope Reborn, we could pick up three birds here. All right, let's put this out. This is now becoming a winnable scenario. We've got one bird and we've got two more birds here. That's three. We can get these birds and head home. They're right near each other. But look at this abandoned rampart. Surely we should look at this, too. I say we don't look at these prickle things. It's not even look at them. It's go up there. So we, we shouldn't do that. But let's go do this. We haven't done this either. We haven't looked over here. We haven't gone up here, which I don't think we should. Um, but we're gonna have to come back. So let's go get our bird first, I guess. Because if we get injured, we may have to just run for it. I wonder if... Does it make sense to get this bird first? One, two, three, and then run back. One, two, three, and then run back. I guess it's all the same. 
Um, but conceivably, we could try to go further here to explore. So let's do this one first. I'm going to walk over here. Oh, but then we have to do... No. Yes, we have to do this. All right. Let's take a break and we'll figure it out. We might be almost done with the scenario if we can get these two S birds. If the birds fly away, if we lose an objective, I'm gonna I'm not I'm gonna flip it. But uh, otherwise I'll see you in eight minutes.
Okay, five and a half hours in. It's 4.22 a.m. Still eight concurrent viewers. I'm not sure how that can be. Only Jonathan is here talking to me, like the good old days. Jonathan says, we need to prioritize the birds above all else. I'm not sure we can take any detours, especially when there's a chance, even remote, that we draw a special scenario card and lose an objective. And there's a slim chance if we do that, we might be able to cash in our upgrades and not have to use them for health. All right, so here we go. We're going to get this. We're going to get. This is this card really troubles me because of this. It's going to force us to do that. But we could come up this way. I'm just trying to think, like, what if this sends us somewhere or something? Maybe it's better for us to do this bird first. I'm just very nervous about this card. Which, Jonathan, which one do you think we should do? The only reason to do this one first, I guess is the possibility that if we end our turn here, we might keep exploring, but probably not. But no, we're not going to be exploring any further. We're not going to be exploring any further. Unless we lost a bird, in which case we'd have to. Let's go right, says Jonathan. Okay, so we're walk walking over here. That's one card. We can keep it. We've got room for it, so I'm keeping it. It's lock picking. Okay, there's a five card here, which hopefully we'll never have to see. All right, now, whoa, don't go in the water. Just hang out by the bird. All right, so Jonathan, you're saying don't look in this castle. Too risky. Just ask this woman listen for a bird whistle please lady do your job do your job we found you the bird now just do your job and don't make this more difficult than it has to be 122 let's just get some of these bugs without having to fight a epic monster oh my god this does not look good You turn back to Ephem, who nods approvingly. You have just unearthed a marsh bug nest and a big one, too. What? She doesn't have to see the bird? We do her activity. It's card 122. Okay, so. All right. You have just unearthed a marsh bug nest and a big one, too. No sooner do you start tearing out pieces of it than she lets out a scream. A buzzing cloud descends on you. Ouch! You crush a bug on your cheek. Soldier bugs. There shouldn't be that many of them this time of season. Their bites are harmless, but their numbers could be fatal. We have to flee. You get up quickly and run as fast as you can. Take a 104 card. So the 104 is objective, right? Okay, so we actually got the marsh bugs first. But now, it says, during the result step of the following action, you must ignore one success for each purse card with the keyword cumbersome. But we can throw out such cards if they don't have a lock. So, we have to get seven successes on four cards. It's a run action. 
if we fail, we have to do it again or read 110, which we have no idea what that is, but probably that's death. I think that's going to mean death. John says, we can't let this lady get injured or she can't help us find more nests. And I think we'll have to keep trying this, but we will die. I think she'll get injured or will get or will be dead. I guess we should have uh, gone the other way and gotten the other bird. All right, let's take a look at what we're up against here, because I believe our super weapon is cumbersome. Um, so if we look at our stuff, Yeah, our Leviathan is cumbersome. That would mean we would ignore one effect, one success. We'd have to get then eight successes with four cards, which we can't do. Not only that, but this Leviathan is not an action card, so once we discard it, we'll never get it back. On the other hand, it's not that useful to us. So if we got rid of that, do we have anything else that helps us run? No, but we can generate symbols. Seven successes on four cards. Seems doable. Okay, wait a second. Um, all right, so we can gear up. That gives us one success. For sure we're doing that. For sure, we're doing that. That's one of our successes. Now we need six successes on four cards, which we can do. No other cards are useful to us. Symbols aren't useful to us. Symbols aren't useful to us. We could take as many cards as we want, though. And with this, so we have to succeed at this. I think we have to throw away the card we're never going to see again, Jonathan. That cumbersome weapon. Because I don't think we can afford to... I don't think we can afford it. Now, what is the rule? Do we have to throw it away now? Let's see what it says. At any time, you may discard purse cards that do not have a icon. Okay, so you know what? I think we don't have to discard it yet. 
I think we just have to discard it if we need to. All right, so we need seven successes on four cards, but this is going to give us a bonus one. So we need six successes on four cards. That seems absolutely doable, but we can't take a chance because this is going away. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I say we draw seven cards to give ourselves a reasonable chance of being able to do this. We can't afford to fail this because we'll lose this. And maybe we'd go even further and do eight. Because if we get lucky, we might not have to throw this out. Okay, here we go. Eight cards. We can only use four of these. How do you feel about that, Jonathan? Normally I would just do it, but this is kind of like life and death. Probably we're going to lose a life with life. All right, so what do you think? Eight cards. Some combination of four of these, we have to get six successes. That's going to be very hard, but there's nothing we can do about it. And if we fail this, we're, we're done for. All right. Eight cards, Jonathan? Or you think even more? I think eight. I think more than eight is not beneficial. Okay, here we go. So far, so bad. Mm -hmm. Still, so far, so bad. That's a little better. That's three. We need a match of this to have a chance. Oh, I think we got lucky. We got lucky. Boy, that was close. We still have to get rid of the Leviathan, but boy, was that close. We probably should have drawn more cards because that's the only way a three and a three that we pulled this off. Holy cow. All right, so we needed to get seven successes. Let's put these out here. We needed to get seven successes, which we have done. Six, seven, six and seven. You can see them there. Okay. And then, but for every card with cumbersome, we must ignore one success. So we would have only six successes if we didn't get rid of the Leviathan. So we're getting rid of the Leviathan. It's not a card in our hand. That is just incredibly painful because otherwise we would keep this for the whole game. Although maybe we wouldn't have enough energy to power it up. All right, well, it is what it is. These stupid birds. So we succeeded. It cost us nearly everything. That was insane. Take a 49 card and throw this out. All right, there's not even a 49 card for us to take. All right, what can you do? What can you do? So we got that bird. Evil. That evil bird. All right, now, as Jonathan says, we got to just hightail it out. Um, you don't want to look in here, right, Jonathan? We can't afford to. We can't afford a single extra action. All right, so we're going to go... One, which is draw a card. All right, so we're going to have to refresh again. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's kind of weird that we couldn't voluntarily block that card. That weapon. Maybe we'll look into that later. When we get to the back to the village, I think we might have to break up with FM. Like, you're not coming out with us again. You're bad luck. You're every time you chase a bird down, it's trouble for us. There has to be a better way than these magic marsh bugs. All right, we now have four life. Um, we have to make a tough decision now. Because we could easily get in self, where our life is at four. We could easily get ourselves into a fight where we lose four health before we have a chance to regain it. So yeah, I think we're going to have to use our up one of our upgrades at least. Our the other option is the potion. But that feels like a waste. So yeah, I think we got to use this, Jonathan. Hope reborn. We're going to cash it in to get 10 what? Oh my god, look at this, Jonathan. It's worse than we thought. To share 10 life points. Okay, so, but instead we're going to have to upgrade now. We're going to upgrade one of them. We have two of them. We're going to upgrade one. We're going to upgrade one. Because otherwise it costs us two. There's no point in not upgrading one. Because it would cost us both of them. So, What upgrade do you want, Jonathan? Do you know? We have one point of upgrade. And we're going to use it, and then we're going to give ourselves some help with the other one. But uh, what do you think? A building, a one point building? Are you sure we can upgrade at any time? Yes. Because, well, let's take another look at it. It's an action. It's a zero, zero. Check one symbol on the destiny page of the Citadel and apply its effect. So it, it has to be done during game. Man, you can't voluntarily. Uh, you know, we could have even used that weapon. Couldn't we have just used that weapon? Just like flail it around? Ugh. All right, whatever, it's gone. Uh, use it to get a building point and mark off one of the mystery buildings, says Jonathan. So you think we should do this? Okay. Right, Jonathan? That's what you're saying we should do. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we did that, which blocks one of our Hope Reborns. It would be lovely to be able to use another one for that. Maybe we're going to get another one before we're done here. Can't believe we didn't get Hope Reborn when we escaped those bugs. Okay. And now we're going to throw out the other one right now for 10 life. To bring us up to 14. So we're at 14. Hopefully that's enough to get us home. And get us this last bird. So we're walking over here now. Stay away from that hole. 
Stay away from the water. That's one card. We get to keep it. It goes here. That's not a bad card. Be better to get the guaranteed success. This is going to let us get home cheap. Okay. So we've walked on this space. Jonathan says, we seem to have all of the glimmers of hope. Can we trade them in all together for something? We don't have, we need five of them. We only have three. Is that right? Because we were supposed to get one and we ran and it didn't exist, right? Is that because I moved it in the past and I shouldn't have? Why are there only three? Let's see if some of them are been vanished. No. It's it because they're in the book, in my stupid book. That's what it is. There's two more in here. I knew this book was going to give us trouble. All right. So Jonathan's right. We have all five glimmers of hope, which is bad idea to have because then when you get a new one, you don't get it, which I think already happened to us once. All right, so we have five glimmers of hope. What can we do with these now? Return five of them to take in 99. I guess that's what we're going to do. Return five. Okay. Take a 99. And that's our hope reborn. So we now have another hope reborn. That actually worked out kind of well, because now we can hang on to this and decide what we want to do with it, right? All right, good work, Jonathan. All right. Our last bird is right there. I'm really reluctant to ask for this lady's help, but uh, I don't know what else to do. But actually, before we ask for her help, it seems we have to do this. This is scaring me. But I don't see any way around it. And it brings out a card. I guess it's going to bring out a card here. I guess 193 is going to be an attached card. No numbers or anything on this card, huh? No plants. No dinosaur plants. All right, Jonathan, here we go. We got to do what we got to do. I hope we don't get sucked into this thing. I'm just going to sneak across the water before anyone says anything and walk right over to that. Okay, here we go. We got to draw two cards. They just get discarded. We don't get to keep any of them. And we draw 193. Could be an event. Could be Mother Bird doesn't like what we're up to, stealing her stuff. All right, Jonathan, look, it's specific to our mission. This makes me nervous. You hear a whistle as if from a big beak bird. With your heart pounding, you approach the source of the song, only to find that the place is already occupied. A man on all fours is obviously on the same quest as you. At the sound of your footsteps, he suddenly stands up and grabs his club from the ground. We are not set up all that well for fighting but this guy picked the wrong time to fight with us because i'm gonna murder an innocent civilian to get that bird if i have to 
The man, dressed in a simple canvas tunic and muddy pants, lowers his weapon upon seeing you. Although he does not show any aggression towards you, he seems nervous. Pieces of nest are visible from the satchel at his side. Oh boy. Now, we've been playing this game very peacefully, but mm, we might be murdering an innocent person today. Because we can't afford... We've come too far. <laughs> we've come too far for these birds. We've come too far for these birds. Now, let's really look to see if there's some number or something that can avoid, that can let us share these birds. What's on his pants? Is that a number 84 on his pants, Jonathan? Is that a number 84 on his pants? Eighty-two, eighty-four. I think it might be. What is it? What number is that? Is that a number? Eighty-three, eighty-eight, eighty-eight. This could be what saves our life. This could be it. Me spotting that number could save us. All right. Let's see if there's an eighty-eight. There's no penalty for thinking you got a number. All right, it's not 88. What is it? Is it not really a number? It looks so much like a number. It's not 83. That would be backwards. Is that really not a number? I'm just going to look at some of these 80s for numbers. Is that really not a number I thought I was going to save us? No, there's no number. There's no 80 numbers. Is it possible it's like a 33 upside down? Doesn't even look like. I'm going to look at 33. We, we need every break we can get. We need to make no mistakes. What card is this? 193. 33 has a thumbs up, but it's the wrong thing. So I guess it's not a number, Jonathan. Unless it's 44. This guy angers us further with his numbers. It's true. It's so true. This guy's going to have to die. He looks like a relative of the gravedigger, unfortunately. Why would you paint numbers on your pants? Those really look like numbers to me. Not 44. All right. Yeah, let's try to barter with him. Let's see what we can do. All right, so we're taking an action. It says actually banish this card and read. Uh, wait a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. We don't have to do this. We don't have to do this. We had to reveal it, but we don't have to do this. It feels like we should, but he's calmed down a little bit. Maybe we can get our own bird. Okay. Let's try to get our own bird. Although, honestly, with the way this woman goes, I feel like it might be easier to kill this civilian and steal his birds. His bugs. But all right, let's. We've done that. There he is. That's terrifying. He looks scary. 
Look, he's related to this guy. Look, Jonathan, they're right near each other. I think they're related. And I don't like the cut of his jib and his club. All right, we're trying to get our own bird. So it's a 137. And then we'll deal with him later. Unless this means we must do it. I'm pretty sure this doesn't mean... I think this just... This symbol... Let me just double check. That just means everyone has to do it together at the same time. The action may not be taken unless all characters are involved. Okay, well that sounds scary, but uh, it's not forcing us to do it. All right, 137. Before I do... Hold on. Ooh, let's just talk about this for a second. <laughs> Um, the game knows he's here. So is this going to be a trick? Is this going to be like... If we try to get the bird without him... All right, let's just try to get this bird. But I'm not going to be happy. If this bird flies away without giving us any bugs, I'm going to kill this woman and this guy. One thirty-seven. You hear a hissing sound and whisper to Ephem, the big beak bird. No, the song of the bird we are looking for is more rhythmic. Corrects Ephem, but you are certain you heard a whistle. Return the dialogue book. So that bird was a false alarm. Now we have to kill this guy, unless he's willing to trade us for it. All right, let's not talk about murdering him right in front of him. If we can barter, we'll barter. Here we go. 434, banish him. And read 434. This is it. This is either going to make or break us. I really hope this guy has peace in his heart. Oh, this looks stressful. The farmer waves to you. <sighs> you scared me. I thought you were one of those beasts that prowl around here. Anyway, it's good to see fresh faces. I would invite you to throw back a cup or two, but I live several leagues from here with my wife and children. Unfortunately, the soil there is not so good for growing anything. That's probably why we see so few people. Are you lost? So I'm not going to read our choices because it feels like this would be, this is not appropriate. We have to decide right now whether to tell them the tr truth or not. I don't know what the truth is, but I feel like we should tell him the truth. Like, mm, we owe it to him. We need to give him an honorable death if we're going to kill him. So we'll tell him the truth. We're kind of looking for an excuse to murder him and rob him. So I say we tell him the truth. Tell him we need those bugs. He can come back with us. We'll give him some food. We'll give him some items. But we need those bugs. So I say we tell him the truth, John. What do you think? Tell him the truth. Okay. Good day to you, we say. We have come from Ninidazer's citadel. It collapsed during the reversal. Since then, we have set up a camp in ruins, in its ruins, where most of the former slave gardeners live. Unfortunately, an armed gang has stolen our supplies, so we have to replenish them as soon as possible. There was already a shortage of food, and now there is the threat of famine. Ephem here has been telling us about the virtues of the marsh bug's nests. You point to his satchel. You seem to know them too. Read 72. This guy has no idea how close he is to dying. Or us. We desperately need those nests. We can try to convince him. We can threaten him. Or we can negotiate. 
I guess we want to negotiate, right? Because let me just see if we have other provisions. We do have provisions. We have a bunch of provisions. So we have food we can give him. And we have... How much barter do we have? One, two... We have two items of barter. So it feels like... I'm thinking we negotiate. What do you think, Jonathan? All right, we're going to have a vote here. If there's anyone else in the channel, now's the time to speak up. We can threaten him, we can negotiate, or we can try to convince him to give us the bugs. Jonathan votes negotiate. Anyone else want to come in from the background of the chat? If you haven't been participating this whole time, that's okay. Feel free to just come in and vote, even though you know nothing. This isn't a binding vote. So now is your time to come out of the shadows and vote. We just lost two viewers when I said that. I get it. I get it. It's a lot of pressure. Six hours in, you don't want to be responsible for a tragedy. This feels like the way you do it, though. You negotiate. Maybe you should start by convincing, negotiating, and then come out the knives. But all right, if no one else is going to vote. Negotiate is 58. Let's see if we have any other choices. No. Okay, here we go. 58. What can we do to convince you to give us your loot? The individual thinks for a few moments. Let's see what you got. If you want to take the following action, the involved characters must return a total of two cards with the keyword barter or a gambler's boon card. If you cannot or do not want to, you can either threaten him or let him go. Well, we absolutely do have two. <laughs> Look, we could give him the magic mirror. And we could give him a spool of thread, two barters. Magic Mirror still has two more uses on it, but I mean, it's getting dangerous. That might be the way to go. We also have a Gambler's Boon. We'd only have to give him this one thing. But I feel like maybe we should hold on to that if we can. Convince might require influence. You've got a good point. We also, well, he doesn't want provisions. I don't know why. So I suggest we give him these two things instead of the gambler. Jonathan says, just to double check, are we supposed to still have the spool of thread? Yeah, we had two of them. We had two spools of thread. We used one. What do you say, Jonathan? Give him these barter items? We could also keep the jam on the mirror. I, I think we should get rid of the mirror. We're going to get rid of it soon. We might as well get rid of it now. Spool of thread's not that big a deal. All right, so... I'm not going to wait for Jonathan's answer. I know Jonathan well enough that he's going to agree about getting rid of the mirrors. So let's see. You want to take the following action. You have to return two cards with barter. Okay, so I'm going to return these two cards. It's a 149 and a 400. The mirror was the 400. Okay. Okay. I'm curious about the mirror's war, but it does sound like something bad happens. Yes, I think so. I don't want it. I don't want the bad thing to happen to me. You proceed with the exchange. All right, so now that we've bartered with him, we can do a zero, zero. Take a one or three card. We got the marsh bugs. 
We didn't have to kill anyone. We did it. We did not have to kill this guy. It was he, This guy has no idea how close he came to death. He has no idea how close he came to death. All right. Well, that seems very appropriate that we bartered. Now we know why we carry around all those border barter things, because they really help you avoid having to murder innocent people. You. Useless. Well, not totally useless, but... You could have done better, though. You almost got an innocent man killed. All right, so now... We've got 14 health. We've got almost full action deck. I wonder if we can actually go get that ballista. How much was the ballista? Time to head home. 15 cards with ballista. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We can get that ballista, Jonathan, on our way home. Yeah. All right. So let's take a look at the entire table here. We've got 14 health. We've got quite a bit of health. We're here. We do have an on the double card. Costs us one card. We have to throw away a card from our hand, and then we can go as far up as we want, which is where this is. If we walk up, it would cost us one, three, four, five, six. So not a big difference. But why not use it, right? Saves us a couple cards, and we can actually throw away this card. All right, so we're going to use this fun run action. Or if we had cumbersome, we wouldn't be able to do it, so we couldn't run with our knife. Uh, do, Jonathan, right, okay. Jonathan agrees we're going to pick up the bus. All right, so we're using this. We spend a card to run. We discard a card and we go one, two, three, four. And you couldn't see any of that because for some reason it's confused about that. Okay, so we've gone one, two, three, four. We're here. We're going to look in there for one... Oh, no, we don't have to look in there. We just look at this. Okay, there's our ballista. 15 cards for six. We don't have anything that helps with digging, I don't believe. Or do we still have the hook? Uh, we do have the hook. It gives us one success, but... Is there any danger of not getting six successes with 15 cards? No. Three for two. No. With six, 15 cards, we're guaranteed to get it. All right. So we're going to draw 15 cards. Nothing bad can happen to us, right? No. Okay. So, uh, get rid of that. Okay, 15 cards, six successes. That should be easy. One, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. It's just tiring. Okay, we'll use some of our health to get some of this back. Okay, six successes. If I miss this, 
were going to be very angry at me. It seems like it would be kind of impossible not to get this. I did read it right, didn't I? Yes, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's our six already. So all of these cards, this was not a no-brainer. Uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Just as a something to remember, we drew fifteen cards and we got fourteen successes. So when it gets high enough, you can get one per card. Maybe something to write down in our notes. When you start drawing enough, it probably averages out to with our deck one success per card. Okay, all these cards energy it took us to dig up this ballista. Okay. All right, you managed to dig it up, it can be brought back to the citadel. So plus two defense and take a 99 card. I mean, that's not that's not trivial. Another hope reborn is quite a good thing. And then banish this. So we've dug up the ballista. It's gone from the game for the rest of our turn. We get two defense. I think our defense should be pretty good at this point. Okay, so two defense. We're at four defense now. Okay. We took our 99, which is our hope reborn. And then we're going to walk over here for one card. And then we're going to look at the Citadel, which is card 77. Tells us it's all beautiful. Here it is. Do we want to finish the mystery building? Maybe unlock another one cost building. Yes, we want to finish the mystery building for sure. For sure. Let's just do this first here. So uh, this is attached to this. Why is it? All right, turn off your tracking. You don't deserve to be on. All right, so. Let's take a nice screenshot of this with our woman here to remind us. Okay. This is our this is this is the totality of our six hour session. This is what we uncovered. This small little area. Okay, that's our screen save. Uh, I don't suppose I could zoom up on that anymore. I mean, I guess I could go like that, get it a little bigger if I one-shotted. Let me just take that screenshot so we have a little better look at it. Okay. Only one shot back. Okay. We're going to leave her at the graveyard. <laughs> um, all right. Now, Jonathan is saying we should use these now. All right. So we've got two more upgrades. Uh, I'll tell you one thing we did. We used a... Um, We used a building upgrade when we traded in one of our Hope Reborns, but that's illegal, right? We actually have to cross off a um, a mark here. So I'm going to suggest that on our previous one, Jonathan, that we do this one that puts us near feathers.
So if we have feel like we want to explore more, we can go feathers. So I suggest we do this for our first building. Now we're going to do another building. So let's see which direction we want to move towards. We don't want reflexes because we God knows when we're going to get rid of that reflex penalty. So we don't want to go this way, probably. Um, but we could go, boy, that's a whole bunch of reflexes down here, too. So probably we're going to go in these three, these two quadrants here or here. So if we decide to go towards 303, that's a whole bunch of buildings. Which go closer this way. If we wanted to go towards 307, that's a whole bunch of buildings, feathers, upgrades. So if we wanted more action upgrades, I think we would go this way. If we want more building upgrades, hmm, this way. So what do you want, building upgrades or action upgrades? What do you think, Jonathan? Building upgrade direction towards a number? Or I guess actually in both cases, no, this might be faster. One, two, eight, nine, ten. Two, three, four, five, six. I think we should go here. That gives us most freedom. We could either go towards this or go towards this. So our next one we're doing right now, I suggest we do this which gives us another building, and we have to trade in a Hope Reborn. That's a 99. Okay, so let's get our other extra building, which we're going to do this one right here. Immediately after it's built, we get a 345. So let's take a look at what that is. Actually, we don't get a 345. We get all of the 345s and get to pick one. So there's only two, just like there was only two of the 234s, and here they are, Jonathan. A bomb workshop and an amulet workshop. A bomb, let's do it this way. Bomb workshop and an amulet workshop. Okay, if we build a bomb workshop, during the preparation phase, if you're at the Citadel, take a bomb. Or you may choose to leave the bomb at the Citadel available for the community. Okay. Or we can build an amulet. 286 amulet charged with powers. Do you think we should look at what a bomb is? I feel like we shouldn't look at what an amulet is. That seems like it's meant to be secret. But the bomb doesn't really sound like what's supposed to be secret. It feels like if we're if we're uh, paying the money to build a bomb workshop, we should be told what the bombs do. So let's shall, let's look at it. What do you think, Jonathan? Do you want to look at what a bomb is, or do you want to it to be a surprise? Because I think I'd be inclined to take the amulet since we have arcane casting and we have this apprentice with us. I feel like we should take the amulet, but let's take a look at what a bomb does. Okay, a bomb gives two successes. Then you have to discard it. And three defense. I mean, that's pretty darn good. 
a two success fight is pretty good. Uh, there's a couple bombs. I don't know if they're all the same or not. They look a little different, but I guess we can leave that for later. Uh, which one do you want, Jonathan? I mean, there's a lot of fighting in this game. But we do have a lot of spell cards. And it's possible that the spell card could give us strength or something. What do you think? It's either go with what we know, a bomb that is in our hand and keeps coming up, or we could go with the magic. The other thing is, did we look at the bomb? Is it heavy? Yeah, it's heavy. Maybe an amulet wouldn't have any weight, so that would be another advantage. All right, so we're going to keep the amulet. We're going to put the bomb workshop back. We can still build the bomb workshop. Just costs us a lot of money. I am going to write down that this is the bomb workshop that we didn't take. And this was amulet workshop. And then this is Machinists, the one we didn't take of 234, was the Machinist. Don't need to write it here. I can just write it up there. Do you remember what it was? Let's just remind ourselves what it was. We were allowed to look at it, so I don't think there's anything wrong with looking, reminding ourselves. This is the building we didn't take, Plans and Mechanisms Guild. Take a 266 Apprentice Engineer. Well, it makes sense then that we went for apprent uh, Magic uh, Apprentice Arcanist person and then an Amulet, so that makes sense to me. Okay, so this is the engineer. Okay, so we still have one more Hope Reborn to use, Jonathan. Because we got two more at the end. Where do you want to go? If we want to get close to another number, we should go here. But if we want to just focus on building upgrades rather than going into numbers, then we could go here and be close to a whole bunch of nice feathers. What do you think? I mean, we're pretty far from numbers. Maybe we should just give up trying to get numbers and just focus on buildings. But the number was pretty darn good. But boy, it's far away. What do you say, Jonathan? I mean, I could go either way. The buildings are pretty good, though. We encountered a lot of things that said if your buildings are high up, you don't have to fight this thing, you don't have to suffer. I think maybe we go for buildings. At least for a little bit. All right, so what I think what I'd like to do is go for a building and do another one of these cheap, constant improvement buildings. I 
I mean, we did need food. Should we build a grain silo? Or are we solving the food problem? So there's no point in us doing that. The animals are also very... How do we get grain? How do we get grain? How can we get grain? Pen? No, those are just animals. I'd really like to get grain. We got a bunch of places that need grain. Doesn't seem like there's a good way to do it. But here's a grain silo. Maybe if we're producing enough grain. Knowledge could help us defeat data cam, says Jonathan. All right, Jonathan, I'm going to have us pick one of these, but you get to pick which one. So either a watchtower to get more defense, a grain silo to get grain or a forum to get more book. I'll let you decide that. We're at three, 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 four, four, five. But presumably we're gonna be helping out the food when we get back. Forum says Jonathan for books, okay. So during the preparation phase, plus one book. So next time we're going to be increasing our book and our influence automatically. Okay, so that's our upgrades. It was, it was kind of fun to do the upgrades at the beginning of the next session. Maybe we'll break the rules and start doing that from now on, but we'll try it once the proper way. All right, well, here we are back. And now we're going to read the epilogue. Yes. All right. But it's time for our final break. So we'll take our eight minute break here. We'll come back. We'll read the epilogue of the case and wrap up six and a half hour session. Another one. That's what it looks like our play times are here for the seven Citadel. I'll see you in eight minutes.
Okay, we're back for the conclusion of the Seven Citadel Dedicam's Awakening second scenario called Get Fed or Die Trying. The cat is behind me here. Okay. Six and a half hours in, it's 5.30. 3 a.m. Time to read the epilogue. So let's make sure we've done everything right and we don't have to go back out there. Um, 
Start reading now, place the bookmark here. You can save the game as long as the bookmark's here. When you run low on life points, or you think you've re reached your goal, you come back. So as a note, like you could always give up or die and come back. Several dozen eyes stare at you. Several dozen eyes stare at you as you enter the silent camp. You can guess the one thought that occupies all their minds at this moment. Did the expedition find enough food to quickly replenish the community's supplies? If both the 11 and 166 cards are available, do not take them, but read 50. Okay. The 11 card is available. And the one sixty the one sixty six card is not available. What card was that, do you think? One sixty six was FM. How could she not be available? What do you think that means, available? Where's the glossary? I think we need to confirm what available means. Does it mean it's in our hand? Where's glossary? I know there's a glossary somewhere. Available. A card is said to be available when it can be found in its original deck. So I guess this is if she died and got returned. Otherwise, discard FM. Okay, so FM gets discarded. I wish I could say I was sorry to see her go, but really I'm not. All right, so we didn't have to read 50 because we had her. Then if you have three or more objective cards, which we do, or two and already with uh, barrels, we that could have been another way we could have won this scenario by getting our provisions up to six and getting two. We should have thought about that. Uh, but we read conclusion A on page eight. Okay, so presumably we got the good conclusion. The faces of your comrades light up when they see what you have brought back. Amidst cheers and relieved laughter, you and a few others spread the fertilizer all over your crop. As expected, the results are spectacular, and after only a few days, you already see fruits and vegetables proliferate. Return all objective cards, applying the following effect. For each card, plus one provision, and take a 99 card. So that's another good reason to use our 99s, because otherwise we wouldn't be able to take them. Hold on, did I put them back when I should have banished them? Hope reborn, hope reborn. I mean, there is enough to take. But I think I may have put some back instead of blocking them. But there's still enough for us to get three new ones. We didn't get more than four. Okay, so... If we had gotten that fourth bird, maybe it wouldn't have even counted. Okay, return all of these cards. 102, 103. One bird escaped us. At least one bird. Okay. Plus one provision for each of those. So let's go ahead and give ourselves our plus one provisions. So three more provisions, which is exactly what we thought we might get as our reward. Okay, we're getting up there. And these are 
We've got three new Hope Reborns. That I guess we're going to get to use now, I hope. Several weeks pass, and with them comes the fear that the soldiers who have been taxing the Citadel will return. You have managed to gather enough food to meet the needs of the entire community, as long as you use strict rationing. One afternoon, a cry from the lookout freezes the whole camp. Wagons escorted by a large and heavily armed troop are reported approaching the Citadel. A woman with a shaved head, her left eye held shut by an ugly gash, steps down to present herself at the entrance. Good day, everybody. We're here for your small contribution. I hope I haven't kept you waiting too long. A few recalcitrant calcitrant donors have delayed us. I'm not disturbing you, am I? And to think that I come to you empty-handed when you are going to give us so much. Where are my manners? You go to meet the scarred woman who greets you with a nod. Rilda One-Eye, she says, pointing to her old wound. Tell me, are you the one who runs this place? I don't want to waste my time with the stooge who serves the soup. What do you want? I sense your grouchy. Being one of our benefactors is an honor you should do that should delight you. As your people must have told you, we are all participating in the war effort, each in our own way. You provide and we dispose. When I put it like that, it's a little hard to swallow. I never did know how to respect convention. But don't blame me. In short, your contribution allows us to continue the fight. Don't ask me which one. I don't know a damn thing about it. That's Dedekam's business. The Necro Druid commands her humble servants. My lads will deduct the contribution from your provisions, and not a single seed in excess, rest assured. No objections? Perfect. Rilda snaps her fingers, and immediately a dozen of her men head for the storeroom. You watch the armed troop and must face facts. Your community's lack of preparation means that standing up to them would result in a bloodbath. Something you are determined to avoid. You clench your fists as you watch them seize the provisions that you have worked so hard to reconstitute. Once their carts are loaded, the troop is ready to set off again. Don't read in this part. Good. Datacam will be happy. Well, well, we'll leave you be. You have work to do, a lot of people to feed, she concludes, pointing to their rev her reveling soldiers. See you soon. The soldiers have taken most of your supplies. If your score is 5 or lower, take a 129. That's the thing that makes you sad. But... We're at six, so we don't get that. We did our job. We built up our provisions so we don't have to be sad. All players discard all the cards in their hand. You have finished, get fed, or die trying. If you prefer to continue your adventure later, then we're going to start this. But how, what are, I'm a little confused about this. Can someone explain this part? It gave us a 99. It gave, we got three 99 cards. Do we not get to use them now? Or do we? Well, we'll save them for next session at least. And that's it. Maybe if you, if anyone can figure out whether we're when we're supposed to use those, because if we don't use them now, it means they're not available for finding the next session. Maybe that's intended, like it makes the next session easier. We still have this discouragement, which we haven't gotten rid of. All right. Um, before we sign off here, which we're going to do very soon, any thoughts on this session, Jonathan? I'll just give a couple thoughts while you're working on yours. Uh, there were a couple moments here that felt like I was getting on tilt, like when we lost that bird. 
uh, felt very unfair to take that away from us. And it was such a swingy thing where we wouldn't have suffered if we hadn't, if we had gotten lucky. I don't like the luck cards at all. I really dislike them. And I suggest we play the house rule about the glimmer of hope cards being able to cancel them. Um, so there's that. On the other hand, you can't disagree with the fact that this place, this land, feels very dangerous. And it's palpably scary. You feel like you could get, you could encounter some dangerous people. And the whole, I mean, it's so, it's such an epic exploration feeling. The fact that we played six hours and this is all we uncovered, and we didn't get her what she wanted, we didn't get him what he wanted, we didn't look in here, we didn't look up here. Uh, it's just so impressive and such an epic feeling. And this whole upgrade stuff is the, uh, you know, this is like the loot crates. It's, you can feel it gnawing away at your brain, your brain wanting to get the upgrades, wanting to get stronger, agonizing over which path of upgrades. It's all very compelling. I just wish maybe there was it. A slightly less focus on despair. Um, and that random bad luck. It does feel like it's a little swingy with those randomness, but I'm glad we're playing on easy mode. That was the right decision. Only the terrible bad luck bothers me. Everything else feels like... It's the exploration is just so the epic sense of exploring this world is so compelling that I want to keep playing it. Jonathan says, maybe peek at the 50 entry in the dialogue book. It was kind of worded weird. I almost thought I remember it seeming like card 11 was going to be something that. So 50 would be if we didn't have FM left. So let's just peek at 50. 50 says, oh, 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 boy, that's it, whoa, all right, I'm going to show you what 50 is, so I don't know, 50 would have happened if we lost our girl, and the 166 card that wasn't in the thing was when we met the guy who had the satchel. All right, look at what 50 says. Taj stands in your way as you try to pass. There have been rumors. Did you kill an innocent man to steal his loot? She looks down embarrassed. And we say, ah, so FM made it back. I was afraid something bad might have happened to her. I think she ran off if we killed this innocent guy. Answer me yes or no. And we can say we did kill an innocent guy or we didn't. And I'm not going to read those pieces of story because we weren't supposed to read them. You could make a note if you want to, um, if you want to keep track in the document, Google Docs, about what things we want to read at when we finish the game. Uh, we could do that, but that's pretty, that, the repercussions for killing that guy could have been severe. Um, John says, not quite as enjoyable as the first session. I think I enjoy interacting with people more than encountering wildlife. Did feel like we lost quite a bit, but I guess it was the pendulum swinging the other way, but we did get quite a few upgrades still in the end. Yeah, I mean, it. the battle is, the fighting stuff is mechanically, feels reasonably sound with an interesting puzzle, but it is the least satisfying and it does grind everything to a halt. On the other hand, like Seventh Continent, it feels brutal. Like this world is, you could find yourself in a bad situation and it feels very dangerous. There's lots of stuff to come back to. I feel like as we finish exploring, there'll be places to come back to. 
I will say one thing for sure, for sure. The fact that they've managed to keep these scenarios reasonably long, but not endless. It's a seven hour session. We've had two seven hour sessions now, maybe three if you count the introduction. They still feel very epic, very long in this big, giant, sprawling world, but they also feel modular, like compartmentalized. And the clock really pushes you to finish up. And in that sense, I think that's a huge improvement over Seventh Continent. Seventh Continent felt hugely epic, but it also felt like you were just wandering till you died. And uh, this one, the, I, the fact that the scenarios end, good or bad, win or lose, is a great win. And I'm loving the campaign stuff and upgrades. So for me, this is a huge win over Seventh Continent, except for one tiny little thing, which is the Seventh Continent exploration world was much more compelling to me than this world of plants. Still pretty cool. I would still be happy to play more of these sessions whenever Jonathan feels like it. Um, I'd like to finish up this Dedicames threat scenario, but we'll pace it. Um, we'll spread it out with the other stuff we do. Jonathan, if you get bored or t exhausted of playing this, that's completely fine too. I can always play it alone. Someone will jump in and help me occasionally. Lots of thoughts to have about what upgrades to get next. Maybe some feather cards. I'm curious what they'll say. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, thanks for joining me. Thanks for if you've watched this after the live stream ends. It's seven hours long. Maybe it'll help you get to sleep. Jonathan, thank you as always for joining me. A pleasure as always. I'll see you next time.